All right. Um, hello, everybody. Um, this is an adult stream using adult language. You have been warned. Thank you guys for tuning in to Celtic Knot this week. Um, it is our episode two, and the adventure title is Many Roads. Um, I, I literally forgot the adventure title. <laughs> uh, Many Roads Chapter 2, An Actual Mushroom Trip. And we are going to be introducing two more players to the game this week. Um, it will be Doctor as Inoki Bolet and Rin as DRJ. And um, we are super excited to have them. And um, without further ado, I'm just going to introduce you guys. Because of the Pacific Northwest storm, um, internet has been a little bit unreliable so we are going to be doing an audio only stream after this point where i'm introducing us but uh, hopefully we will be able to entertain you visually anyway and um with that hello everybody my good friends um i meant to have you guys introduce yourselves in the order that it appears on this discord list thing so, um, Aurora. Uh, I am Shiny, and I'm playing Aurora. She's an Eladrin, um invention wizard with a handful of mechanical friends. Thank you. <laughs> it me. <laughs> uh, Bell Toll. Hey, everybody. I am El Ninja Cupcake. I am going to be playing Bell Toll, the Kenku cleric with no social skills <laughs> great context to have uh Seripides. hello i am alora aka the alora aka tiny white girl and i will be playing Seripides nowhere a tiefling rogue who elicits as much arousal as she does fear Sweet. Perfect for Valentine's Day, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> Deirdre! So, I'm Rin Pond. I'll be playing Deirdre, the drumming, dancing bard you're about to meet. Awesome. Sparks. Hey, I'm Sparks. Um, I am a lightfoot halfling um, with a few screws loose upstairs and no awareness of it D downstairs <laughs> <laughs> okay uh whipper will uh hi i'm cal and i will be playing uh whipper will the kenku druid who has um less more or less social skill than bell toll but not much all right, and last but not least, Inoki. So uh, I go by Doctor, and I will be playing Inoki Ballet, who is a myconid druid emerging from the Underdark, has no clue what's going on on the surface here, has no clue how any of these creatures get along with one another, and is here to be a bit of a collector for uh, my dear lady. <laughs> All right, thank you. So, um, before we get started on this week's episode, I would like, I would love to give inspiration to whoever is willing to do a, a recap of last session. So obviously, Enoki and DRJ, you weren't there, but if you watched it and you want to do a recap, you're also allowed to do so. I'll do it. Okay. So what I happened? Uh, hold on now. Let me get my notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have your notes, guys. All That'll right. That'll help you. So, our story started at Gritty McDuff's. Uh, Whip and Sparks were already there. Uh, Sparks was in quite a state, uh, physically and probably emotionally. Uh, Aurora came along to help. Uh, Seripides followed them. Beltol 
ended up giving rights to some dead dude inside. Uh, and that was a whole thing. Uh, and then we had to go talk to, oh, of course I didn't write his name down. We had to go help his, we have to go help his kids. What's his name? Njord. Yeah. So we had a vision after we went to go visit Njord of the sea at dawn. Uh, it's sunny and warm. There was cool air. Uh, and then there was sorrow and then only the sea. And then it was the face of the god in the sea saying that we, <laughs> the message that we have to send to his son and daughter are is Freya and Freyr. Hope we can talk again soon. These people I are I sent to you, don't kill them. And basically told us to go to Winter Glen to look for Freya. And then we hunted a deer. And I can't remember the rest. Okay, that was still <laughs> about everything that happened. Thank you, Aloy. So please take a DM spiration. Yeah. <laughs> um so where you guys left off was um, after you dealt with some fawn sequences and um, <laughs> <laughs> and took care of the deer, uh, handled the meat the way you thought would be best, and diversified it between yourselves, you guys were setting up camp for the night. So... Um, because you're at the beginning of your journey, I, I do want to go into this just to kind of like establish that you guys kind of know what you're doing. So how are you guys setting up for camp? Um... Meow. <laughs> no, we did some of that last time. With thought... the with the campfires. Yeah, there's a campfire going. Campfire. Uh, we we had walked some deer meat previously, but I think that uh, what Whip Whip Will sleeps up in a tree. Sparks sleeps under it generally. Mm -hmm. it's established tree sleeping formation. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Yeah, I think Aurora. Um, you know, being and Aladrin, she would probably trance as much as possible so she can kind of keep an eye on things between her and her companion, but she's probably used to just curling up with uh, Aurelia, her little cat, and sleeping somewhere near the fire. Okay. Trancing, as it were. Sweet. Yeah, because you're an elf. You only need four hours. Yeah. Serpides is probably hunched over by the fire. And she can just kind of sleep like that. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't just sleep in the fire? No, because... That's right, you're not fire... Sweats. Yeah. That's racist. <laughs> uh, that's life. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, you guys are... You're finding your spots to sleep. Um, and we'll say, Seripides, you're probably the last one to go to sleep, right? Since you've yeah, been watching like... the fire, keeping it going. Oh, absolutely. I'm so proud of this thing. I'll never admit it. Okay. So <laughs> you, you begin to enter into your trance, and I'm going to roll some dice. Uh-oh. Ooh. Yikes. That's what, you don't good. like that noise? <laughs> Not coming for my DM. It's, it's rarely <laughs> good when the DM is excited <laughs> about their own rolls. I have so many dice, but I don't have a D8, so I need to go find one real quick. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> Spare with me, guys. <laughs> okay, there we go. We were yelled at one. to be prepared. Yeah, I will. I mean, I'll yell at you again. She didn't want. really yell at us. Yeah, as much as did I. I. <laughs> what was the joke? <laughs> the F angry boots. Everybody realizes <laughs> Mick Boots is aggressive. Oh my god! I'm just laughing so hard. Don't see what she does to us. 
She beats yeah. us off stream, guys. It's God, not okay. And listen. <laughs> but it's because she loves us. Oh, okay. So I've rolled my dice, guys. <laughs> um, and they're all you... they're all crits. <laughs> they're <laughs> all crits. So you are tending the fire, Cerebides, and you go into your trance and it kind of trickles down to embers. Um, you're kind of used to this. You've done this before, and as a general rule, weather permitting, the fire doesn't really go out in the four hours that you're trancing. Usually, it's fine and. Um, you're, it's, it's just kind of like an established thing that you're used to, so it's not a problem. And as the flames flicker and lower, and the wood turns into coals, you all can give me a perception check at disadvantage. For today. But I don't but I don't like this thing. You don't, but you guys are all sleeping. Does that just mean we're not adding our bonus? So it means you'll roll two D twenties and you'll take the lower number and you'll still add your perception bonus to both. Oh no. Hey, so I still got a twenty. Oh <laughs> cheater. I got a now roll one. Oh, roll fifteen okay. and an eighteen. Alright. So let's see. So we've got uh who who all got over fifteen? I got exactly at fifteen. All right. Does that count? Yeah, yeah, fifteen and up. That's perfect. Um. So. Uh, and then Sparks got a natural one, right? That is correct. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Sparks, you are deeply asleep. You're just cozy. And you feel very safe under this tree with your friend watching over you. Possibly. <laughs> friend, um, friend is a strong word. <laughs> acquaintance. He your newfound best friend. We're, we're brother. close associates. <laughs> he looks like a halfling, but he snores like a giant. There you mm. go. I like yeah. <laughs> Hope I'm not shaking the tree though yet. <laughs> no, you totally are, man. Roll, roll for snore power. Okay. <laughs> snore power is going to roll. Watch him crit on thing. it. One D snore. Uh, is there any modifiers for that? Nope, just a, a flat. It's not. So you have slight of nose. Okay, you're not shaking the tree. You're fine. <laughs> slight of nose. Slight of glance. <laughs> oh my gosh. That, that's gross. That's uh... really gross. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sparks is sleeping and his glands are fine. And um, Whip and Serpides, you are both. Stirred from your slumber, your light slumbers, by the sound of a branch breaking. First off a little bit to the west of your camp, and then you hear another one closer. A little bit farther north this time. And you kind of pause in your sleep to listen and you can hear what sounds like things moving through the tall grass towards you guys. What do you uh, want to do? Seripides would if she already has had her hand on her longsword the whole time already. So she pulls it out and stands up and walks a little bit, I think you said north towards the closer side? Yeah, north and west. And um, can I roll for stealth? Yes, you can roll for stealth. All right. Just so you know, the DC is going to be higher for a good stealth because you are near the only light source on this hill. Okay. Um, well, I got a 20. A 20. Okay. Natural? Yeah. Natural 20? Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Man, this bum, session bum. is starting out the opposite of the last session. Oh, uh, no. Not once. <laughs> but that means I have a 24 total. 
Okay, that's excellent to know. <laughs> so, uh, with yeah. the low light of the fire, you are kind of crouching in next to the brush, and um, you're just kind of moving with the shadows, and you feel quite stealthed. So, um, go ahead and give me a, another perception check to see if you can figure out where the noise is coming from exactly. Oh, Pinpoint. Uh, 16? 16, okay. 16 is enough for you to make out a shape a little bit of a ways off, probably 50 feet away. So it got close, but not mm -hmm. too close. And um, the silhouette of this shape, you see antlers. Okay, possibly and that's all. belonging to a fairly young elk, maybe. But yeah, you see a, a dark shape and the silhouette of antlers. Okay. Well, Sturbidies would not be interested in this deer. Okay. We've already got all the meat we need. Right. So I would probably just like roll my eyes to myself and head back to camp. Okay. So you roll your eyes and roll your body around and start walking back towards the fire. And you hear a whoosh. And yeah. look back over your shoulder. And you see a staff that is glowing, the green flame. And it illuminates this hunched figure that wasn't a deer or an elk, but some kind of humanoid creature wearing a wooden mask that has large antlers coming off of it. Uh, how tall do you say it is? Um, on its own, it's probably about five and a half feet tall, but the antlers add another foot and a half. And I would like you and Whip to roll for initiative. So you guys are oh. awake. Oh, snap. Oh, no. Save us. Um, I love how Serpidine's first question anytime she meets someone is, how tall are they? Uh, yeah, because I have to know. If I'm not the tallest person in the room, I gotta up my intimidation. <laughs> uh, I rolled, rolled 14 initiative. I got an eight. Okay. Okay. So, um, Whip, you have the first spot in initiative. So, um, you were kind of looking around and you watched Seripides go towards the edge of the camp. And mm -hmm. um, you notice her turn around, and then the brightness of this green flame against the dark. Green flame. <laughs> no, that's not our show. <laughs> <laughs> it's not our brand. Yeah, well, okay. we don't have our own. Like the birds are fine. So, um, yeah, you see this happen, and um, you see it stand up to its possibly full height. Okay. What would you like to do with your turn? Um, so Whip is going to hop out of the tree. And let me roll a die real quick. Yep, he's going to land on Sparks. Okay. So that's going to wake Sparks <laughs> Lovely. up. Lovely. Yeah, so you're um, awake with a uh, crash, <clears throat> Sparks. And then he's going to... Um, let's see... Does that mean I should roll initiative as well? Yeah, go ahead. Would that be like with disadvantage though, since everyone else has already kind of started? No, they'll just go around ahead of you. Okay. I got a not one again. Oh my god! So <laughs> they'll go two ahead of you. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like a crumpled little, <laughs> even shorter. You pile just of you hat. you you don't do well with being woken up like this. You need some time to get your wits about you. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So, <laughs> what's the rest of your turn going to be with? Um, I think I'm just going to hide and start heading in that direction. So I'm, I'm going to try and not be seen, you know, take the hide action, which, uh, for which I have rolled a 22 collectively. Okay, that is a great hide. So tell me, tell me what that looks like. What are you hiding behind? Or how are you hiding? Um, so I would imagine that Whip has lots of little um, collections of various flora and fauna on him, like grass and twigs and, you know, mostly tree stuff. And uh, so when we're in this tall grass, he's just going to pull out some, like, dried tall grass and, like, lay it over his shoulders and then hunch down and start walking through the tall grass. And he's only, like, four and a half feet tall, so... Okay. Um, he's pretty yeah. small to begin with, but he's just going to, like, cover himself a little bit. His feathers are dark. This is, like, optimal hiding time for him. It's perfect. So, um... How close do you want to get to them? So, as I described before... Um, Serpides was uh, around at the edge of the camp towards the tall grass, and um, this figure was about 50 feet away from her to the northwest. Um, I think Whip is just going to come up alongside Serpides and try to um, non-startlingly <laughs> alert her to his presence. Okay, how do you um, do that? But um it's gonna be uh he's gonna do his um call. He's gonna whistle his name very softly. Okay. Let's Can I roll see. to see if it spooks me or not? Um sure. Just give me like a for intents and purposes, like a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Oh, hey, now. How does a 16 help me? Oh, that's great. You, you're you totally fine. You recognize the call. It's not that common out here. Cool. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, if Seripides was walking away from the thing and hasn't noticed it yet, right? Um, no, she had turned around and seen it. Right, okay. I looked at my shoulder and turned around. All yeah. right, so then, like... Whip's turn is basically just um, going to join her and letting her know she's not going solo on this, on whatever's about to happen. Okay. All right, and um, it's now going to be this figure's turn. They look towards you, and their whole head tilts, as, and you can see this by the like lilting of the antlers. And it it looks around and kind of surveys your camp, and it does kind of like a crouch, and in its right hand, it just kind of plants the staff in the ground and leans its face towards you, and it says, "What are you doing here? This is our uh land." We were sleeping, and then you woke us up, and now here we are. So we need to figure out what's going on. One should never light a fire at night on top of a hill. Oh, I'm sure there are plenty of things one ought not to do. What's it to you? It is bad luck. It will draw things you do not want to see here. Leave, or we will have to make you. I look at Whip and kind of like raise my eyebrow a little bit. Like, are we going to do this? Uh, Whip, Whip kind of stands up, reveals himself, because um, he's not sure if the thing had seen him. He's still very small, especially standing right next to Serpides. But he just kind of um, tilts his head one way, tilts his head the other way, gives him a good long bird stare. And then he, he uh, looks over at 
Seripides looks back at the creature, clearly taking way too long to figure out what to say. And then he just says, They both make noises. Well said. Uh, and that's as indecisive as he can possibly be. Yes. The druid... Um, it holds up its other hand and kind of slowly brings it closed into a fist and it murmurs something that you can't quite make out and you see that the wood from the mask is kind of starting to spread down over its shoulders and it's kind of coalesced and it says I am out for you again Seripides it is your initiative turn um around roughly what time is it it is about oh spooky o'clock <laughs> spooky o'clock it's about one in the morning uh yeah so everybody needs a good everybody needs some sleep uh i look at the druid i put my i i'm assuming i still have my sword out Yes. But I I make as if to put it away and I say we don't want any trouble here. We just need to rest. If you let us rest, I promise we'll be gone before the sun rises. But if not, I'm going to have to fight you. Whip just quietly echoes, "Before the sun rises." Okay. And just so I make sure I heard that right, you said you will leave before the sun rises? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and make me a persuasion check with advantage. So um, you'll either roll your d20 twice or um, whip can roll a dice also. And you guys can pick the higher of the two. Um, well, I have a plus seven to persuasion, so I you will. You can uh, yeah, roll twice. I'll roll okay. Twice. <laughs> I, ha I have minus two. <laughs> Ooh, nat 20, baby. Boom. Womp womp twice already? We just started. Bow, 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 bow. You guys, these are my new dice. These are my good <laughs> dice. My good dice. Amazing. Dice. Okay, so um, that is an amazing roll. So it's, that's a 27 total, right? That is a diggity dang 27 if I ever diggity dang saw one. Okay, so. Stay as long as you like. <laughs> <laughs> um, he pays us to stay there. He... This is your land now. <laughs> <laughs> the figure makes kind of like a guttural noise, like, hmm. And does. I will take your word for this. But hear you, me. If you do not follow through on your word, we will not forget what you have done. And with that, the figure uh, lifts the staff and gives it a little shake, and the light goes out, and it kind of folds in on itself, and there's kind of a, a light gust of wind, and you just see the grass rippling behind where it was. Well, all right then. I'm uh, over. Oh, go ahead. No, right. no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm over in a pile, and it kind of looks like there's two little creatures fighting under my hat, but it's just me trying to figure out how to get out of it. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, so you're awake. Um, that's been plenty of time for your natural oneness <laughs> to get sorted out um what, what are you guys going to do now the druid for all appearances has left you for the time being and some of your companions are still asleep 
Um, let's see. I'm sorry. What did you say? I just totally blanked out. I was trying to read this thing about this cantrip. No, it's good. So, um, for all intents and purposes, the druid has left you alone for now. What would you guys like to do now? Um, I would look at whip and say. Oh, wait, what do we, wait, we call him Whistle, don't we? Yeah, you've been calling him Whistle. <laughs> yeah, so I look down at Whip and I go, well, Whistle, looks like we gotta wake everybody up in a few hours. Uh, Ain't no let's, magic. Let's, let's go, I don't know, let's put the fire and let's just sit somewhere. I'm irritated. Are you, so are you going to go back to sleep or are you going to stand watch? I'm gonna stand watch. I want to make sure that it, we're out of here by like five. Okay. I'm the dad of the group right now. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So, um, I don't recall if you used anything, but um, by staying up, you will not be able to regain hit points and spell slots. Um. Okay. I don't think I use anything because the thaumaturgy or whatever. Yeah, can't try. You're good. Yeah have that and it's at will so okay i really wanted to use it when we were doing the druid thing but i don't have a voice alter yet <laughs> oh my goodness that's gonna be really cool i know i could try and pretend i have a deep voice but <laughs> it's not yeah work. it will anytime you want to nobody's stopping you it's just the <laughs> entire internet watching so yeah no worries <laughs> okay so um, with Seripity standing watch, um, I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit and say uh, Sparks and Whippoorwill, unless you would like to do otherwise, you go back to sleep. Um, yep. And five o'clock-ish rolls around. Seripity is back to you. Um, I go around and start poking people with my tail to wake them up and just start. Hey, wake up. Get up. We gotta go. Beltol sleeps like the dead. <laughs> Please um, have an inspiration. Um. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> you know what I do? Um. I use my I use my infernal legacy. And uh, uh -oh. so, so for one minute I will cause harmless tremors in the ground. <laughs> so a minor earthquake. I am assuming. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's happening. It's like the ground has the magic fingers thing. It's <laughs> fine. Somebody put no. a quarter in it. Somebody put a quarter in the ground. And everybody <laughs> yells, get up! Uh, Whip, Whip yeah. goes over to um, Belthol as soon as he realizes that they are a heavy sleeper and just like leans over them very close. And uh, makes mimics that like deep bell tolling sound that is how they introduce themselves. So basically, he's just yelling their name in their face. <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> I love it. As Boom. Exactly. Beltol Beltol gets that bird floof, and the little bird <laughs> smile and kind of curls up into a little ball and gets a little sh like shudder, mm -hmm. and then sits up and stretches. I'm like completely oblivious to everything that has happened. <laughs> I think Aurora, she's probably up pretty quickly considering she just does, you know, her trance. She was probably up a little early and getting her knickknacks repaired and stuff like that. Okay. I still poke her with my tail. <laughs> okay. okay. So, so are all of you convinced to get up and get packing? That's what I want to know. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, um, you pack up the. Oh, I just messed stuff up. <laughs> Whoa. You embiggened it. Ooh. Ah. Why? You crimed it. Crimed Why is it, it being like that? Somebody fed it the mushroom. What did I, I touch? I don't know. It's not know. that kind of mushroom. Ugh. I think, I have a feeling this is going to make things really weird. What did I do? 
If you've got uh, Streamlabs OBS, you can actually lock the frames, so you can't do it. Mine select it, and I can adjust them all the time. It's annoying. That's genius. <coughs> I, well, I went from being the shape of this to being a portrait style of rectangle. Oh, I don't know. I'm just going to leave it here, and <laughs> hopefully it's fine. We can work this stuff out later. Just and keep changing the size and position of it all stream. Yeah, that like I don't need to pay attention it's to what I'm saying. I'm just struggling, that's all. I don't I don't know how to look. We can talk about this after the stream. So we're ready for our next game. So <laughs> Okay. Um So you guys you guys get packed up and everything, um and you put the fire out and just gather up your bedrolls or in blankets and cloaks and whatever you use to snuggle up in for the night and um you begin to make your way what direction are you going to continue your way north um more yeah i mean it was, okay. is that when we're following the pointy one yeah <laughs> the map up hold on yeah, so um, right now on the map, you are um, headed north from Kings Bay on an unmarked wagon trail that uh, continues up around the coastline. And you're kind of where that little like stretch of land, I can't remember what the technical name for that is, peninsula. Um, it's yeah. sticking out there and um, up ahead the coast and the forest kind of close in um, we just keep going the direct route that we were I think we decided we were just going to take the most direct straight through route right right well yeah. so all the we had decided we wanted to go north by land to right. um, our destination we didn't and when we were trying to figure out the best way to go, um, Whip used his knowledge of the land to the best of his ability and literally just pointed due north while we were still in the inn. <laughs> yep. And so that's all the information we've been going on. Yeah, because you guys don't have a map. Everyone except for Whip has either just arrived at King's Bay or the, your knowledge is kind of limited to that area and um, the Lyreth Road. So none of you had gone north except Whip. So yeah, you're just you're just walking along this trail. So you continue your travels and um, you make it north. What pace would you guys like to be traveling at? The so, sustainable one. A sustainable one. That's a good answer. So, um, I have this awesome handy tool that I found on the internet. It's definitely safe, but um, the internet. For, <laughs> the internet. The internet. <laughs> so, um, at a slow pace, you can. Oh, who left? Who's gone? They're back. Not bad. I'm back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. You good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just looking for the map. I can't remember where we posted it. Oh, okay. We can have Whipper World jump on you I again. I thought it was pinned in Discord, <laughs> but let me see. I will. I will put it in the game log channel so that you guys can see it. It's there. It's, it's in, in player game, chat. In player chat. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Shiny. Thank oh, there you. we go. Sweet. Thanks. So, okay. yeah, so you guys are just going north, and um, for a traveling estimation of time, you can travel at a slow pace and be stealthy. You can travel at a normal pace, which gets you another six miles out of your day. Um, but you can't be stealthy, but you can be more perceptive, or you can just go really fast. And just bust through it and make a lot of noise, but you'll get where you're going, and that gets you up to 30 miles a day. So I'm not telling you exactly what the scale of the map is, right. um, 
it has the, some, the reds meander a little bit, but um, like what what is the pace that you guys are wanting to set? Well, as a rogue, Cerberus always errs on the side of secrecy and being sneaky, so she would probably want to be careful. Okay. But that depends on what everybody else is doing too. Yeah, Aurora's instinct wouldn't be to be wouldn't be super sneaky. She would probably be chatting at people and stuff. So even if the pointy one is like sneaking along or trying to be quiet, she probably runs up every once in a while or runs behind wherever they've ended up and starts asking them questions and stuff. So she may not lend to very sneaky travel. Yeah, okay. I'd say I'd say normal pace then, because at least then we can be perceptive and Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And that's from more of a like mechanical standpoint. Your characters probably Just have a, some intuition of this right. without using the exact terms. So um we'll say you're setting out an, on a normal pace and um as you make your way up this wagony road, um it becomes less kind of damp and moist and begins to dry out and you see some stones scattered along uh, buried in with the dirt in the road and occasionally you see um, kind of rubble mounds along the paths and um, you see up to your north and west, the forest is getting ever closer as this road makes its way further north, and um, the, the landscape is beautiful. It's soft hills, there's brightly colored wildflowers just kind of tucked away and with the tall grass in different places, and you can see and hear small birds kind of rustling through them as they flutter about doing their tiny animal stuff. Um, every time there's a bird chirping or tweeting or twittering or whatever uh, within earshot of the group, um, Whip is echoing them. Just whatever sound they make, he makes too. To himself, like not, he's not, he's not um, projecting loudly. He's just, he hears it and just automatically repeats it to himself. Awesome. You can mark that in your notes as different bird noises you know how to do. I, I think as they go along, Aurora is probably like picking flowers and stuff that she finds and then, you know, just trying to talk at people, asking them questions about themselves and things like that. So just going back and forth, being social and picking. Okay. Sounds good. Sparks um, seems to be enjoying himself immensely and this is a good time for him. He's happy and kind of skipping along under his big hat, excited to be with another adventuring group. Um, but he's getting a little perturbed and finally just flips open his pack and is like, why is my stuff so heavy? And he pulls out 10 pounds of meat and goes, when did, who gave this to me? I didn't agree to carry this and just logs it down a grassy hill, puts his pack on and keeps skipping along. Um. <laughs> Whip sees that, uh, kind of looks at everybody else, who I assume is kind of also just watching it happen. Um, it, Whip, Whip points a points a feathery hand toward Sparks, looks at the group, and goes, "It's not mine. I just found it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. I would imagine, yeah, if Aurora sees that, she'll probably look at him and she'll be like, "What is wrong with you? You killed." an animal, wasted a bunch of meat, and now you're going to throw away the rest of the meat you had left? Wait, wait, I got that meat? I assume someone gave it to me to carry. I don't remember anything about anything from last night. Well, it certainly wasn't me, but you should learn not to waste food. <laughs> You are the dad of the group. <laughs> yeah. I kind of get up on my tiptoes and look down the hill to see if I can see where it might have ended up. Okay. I just kind of wave my hand dismissively like, oh, well. Okay, how hard are you actually trying to look? 
I'm not looking that hard. Okay. Uh, let me just do a roll then. Okay, you are not looking that hard, and you don't find it. So I was just saying that, like, I'm up on my tiptoes, looking over the grass, seeing if I could see where it went. I oh, felt like yeah. I could leave the path if it looked for it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, whoa. To care. But but a halfling up on his tiptoes has such a great uh, vantage point. It yeah, does. So, so That's immense. why you are able to not find it so easily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't find it, but you don't find it really well. Uh, so it is approaching around noontime when um, the trail actually meanders to the edge of the forest. And you get some shade there. The, the sun is bright, but it's not hot. It's just kind of annoying. And um, you start to see some different fauna, see actual bushes interspersed between trees, not just grass. You see small um, granaries and ivy growing up the trunks of trees. And you start to see... First, just a few mushrooms, and then um, several bunches of larger mushrooms. Weird. Uh, I think Aurora would probably, like, if there are small, some small ones that she can add to the little bouquet of flowers that she's gathered, she'd probably pick some of them and put them in with the other things. Okay. That's Do these look edible? Fine. Um, give me a nature check. There's a lot Whip of different is also gonna be. Whip is also going to be checking for that. Okay. You I know, I'm thinking the same well. thing. I got a 14. Serapides is looking at you all like you're nuts. I have a, She's I have not a even 15. So, but I, and I would imagine that for, for Whip, this is a pretty, like, natural, like, he's not necessarily, um, Going over and inspecting super closely, he's just watching and sort of checking against his mental catalog. Okay, so are you guys shift. looking at the like small and normal sized ones, or the kind of bunches of larger mushrooms? By larger, I mean like at least the size of your average portobello. Uh, uh, I think Whip would be focusing on the larger ones. Yeah, that's that's where Beltel would be because if they would see. Uh, Aurora picking the little ones for her flowers. And if she's they're looking for food, they're looking at Okay, so um the ones that you guys are finding are not harmful. They're edible or at least just kind of a neutral material. Not gonna hurt you, might not help you that much, but like you could do something with them. I think Beltor's right. going to pick three of them. Okay. Yep. Whip will do the same. All right. So you can add, uh, you can list them as portobello mushrooms no, yeah. in your inventory. And you continue to make your way with some mushrooms in your pockets now. And it's just a little while further where you start to hear um, some noise. Deirdre, I saw you unmute that mic. You are correct <laughs> in <laughs> assuming. So what are, what are the sounds that you're making? So it sounds a little something like this. You guys approach this and hearing it sounds like drums and you walk into this clearing and it is uh deirdre please describe your character so my character's a redhead and kind of like half tribal gear half like sailor wear just kind of dancing around there's a drum that is drumming itself in the middle, and she's kind of dancing around. Um, there are a 
a group of humans who are clearly enjoying the mushrooms that she's just kind of ignoring and she's just um dm what time of day is it it is around high noon yeah so she's just kind of enjoying the day and the sunlight is it sunny yeah or? it's sunny kind of cool yeah sunlight. so just kind of enjoying the afternoon and dancing around and wholly unaware of her surroundings or the fact that she suddenly has an audience okay so yeah I, I, so that's your setting and um indeed there are two other humans who are kind of just chatting and like crawling around on the ground and um kind of over and under these humongous mushrooms there are some of them are about a foot tall some of them are like five feet tall but you've come into this glen and it's, it's mushroom central and there's Sir. this girl who's dancing Serpity stops at the edge and is just not happy about anything that's happening. <laughs> um, I... Go ahead, Orx. She kind of tries to stop everybody and she's like, hold on a second. I kind of look up at Serpity disappointingly as I'm kind of like tapping my feet really fast, doing a little dance under my hat. Um, Whip is immediately going to run into the circle and attempt to mimic all of the dance moves that he sees. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> Same uh, with Aurora. In conjunction with his minus two per, uh, charisma, so... <laughs> Deidre yeah. gives zero cares. She welcomes you both into the circle and starts dancing with you. Uh, I have rolled a three, which, after For... bonuses, is a one. For performances? For performance. performance? Okay, yeah. so... So what is, what is a bad first dance? To see if I can mask that. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, sure. You you do have the steady beat, so you can roll again. Uh-huh. Oh, does that 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 counts as the help action? <laughs> yeah. So I I rolled a dirty twenty, so I think I grab one of his wings every time he starts to lose his balance and just kind of pull him back onto his feet. <laughs> uh huh. Awesome. So yeah, like he's he just immediately starts letting Deirdre lead. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Yeah, Aurora will go running in, and as soon as she sees this drum playing itself, that will be her main focal point, but she's still sort of awkwardly dancing and stuff with everybody, too. Okay. Oh, Beltol goes in and is trying to figure out why the drum is drumming itself. They've never seen anything like that. Like, doing the, the bird cock their head kind of, like, between the drumsticks and the drum and all around mm. it, drawing oh, pictures of it, making notes. There, there's no drumsticks. It's literally a drum that is beating itself with invisible hands. That's wonderful. That's even better. <laughs> Sparks yeah, yourself. Stop notes. hitting yourself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Belt Fire. hole is fascinated. <laughs> okay, so uh, Serpides, you have failed in getting them to halt. Um, some of your friends are now dancing with this stranger. I do so, like the... Just... I do the like facial equivalent of a face palm. Like I face palm without actually moving any part of my <laughs> a hands free pa- face no. palm. Face yeah. It's not a face palm. It's a it's a face tail. Yeah, I do that with my I face palm with my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm holding Perfect. my temples as if I have a headache. And I sigh quietly and I just sort of look around and find a mushroom that is just at sitting height and uh i plop myself down and i pull out some rations and i eat because these idiots are dancing and i'm gonna eat because i'm tired and i was up all night (laughs) (laughs) okay so for those of you who are not engaging in the dancing so far so beltol and sparks right Yep. I got that right. Um, you are kind of waved over by one of the the crawling humans, and it's this guy who's wearing like the D and D traveler's equivalent of like a safari, like bird watching hippie type person. So it's like the the felt hat. There's a vest with a lot of pockets and like 
a different a different like ropes and knots. There's like a paracord bracelet, and um, he he's waving you guys over. I excited excitedly bound over towards him. Belto looks a little confused and then flaps her wings back. Okay. So, uh, Sparks, this guy looks up at you and he's on his hands and knees. Like he's, he's like underneath a mushroom with a broad kind of cap that's providing him a little umbrella. And he says, Hey, man. Do you like mushroom hunting too? I'm gonna get down on my hands and knees with my big hat over me and be like, uh, yes. This is the best spot I have ever found. You can't tell anybody about this. About you crawling on the ground for the mushrooms? Or about the mushroom spot? Oh, the mushroom spot. Do you want to try some? This place is so beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful, little man. I'm going to roll, roll a, um, a, like a check to see if I can tell whether he is has good intentions or not, because I'm not very convinced okay. that I should try anything give me, from him. Go ahead and give me an insight check. I mean, there is a reason I'm ignoring them and dancing and all my life. Seventeen? Seventeen. Um, you... You're kind of watching him, just like looking for social clues. And this guy just seems really happy to be there. And... He doesn't want you to share his mushrooms, but he wants to share his mushrooms with you. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll be like, do these, are, are the, do the mushrooms make you really happy, or are you just always this happy? You know, after a certain point, it's hard to tell. Wow. Oh, okay. My, my name is Roger. What's your name? My name is Sparks, and I'm pretty happy right now, but I do have this one person I know that could be happier. Could I have one of your mushrooms to give to them? Yeah, yeah. And he like, turns to his big mushroom umbrella and kind of pulls off a little chunk of it and hand breaks that chunk into two smaller chunks and hands them to you. Let's okay, take cool. it slow. So I'm going to grab both the little chunks of mushroom and go back to Seripides and be like, I have something for your lunch. <laughs> Seripides looks down at him and without even like missing a beat goes, little one, we are not friends yet enough for me to have a trip with you. Oh no, I wasn't going to take any. I was, I was going to give you these these mushroom chunks. I think you put them in your nose or something. Sir, he knows that he's not going to leave her alone until she takes them, so she takes them and puts them in her pack. And kind of she does like a shoeing motion and go, go back to dancing. Sparks seems at least happy that maybe in the future she'll try them and be happier because of it. Aww. Aww, that's really sweet. Please have the inspiration. Use of drugs. Seripides wonders why everybody thinks she unhappy. <laughs> Seripides content in her neutrality. Do I get an inspiration? You do. Yes, I did okay. say that. Indeed. Then Sparks Just... goes and bounds off to the others to join the dancing. Because you right. are adorable. <laughs> it's just in time for the drum to go and then DJ lets out a loud I and then she's like thank you who are you guys I didn't expect to find anybody dancing out here
Beltola is very confused by the drum stopping. Uh, Aurora will jump up and say, uh, I'm Aurora. These are some of my new friends, but mostly what's this drum stopping? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Aurora. I didn't get that last part. What about my drum? What's this drum's deal? How does it do its thing? How does it work? Oh, well, I just, and I wave my hand, and the drumming starts again, and then I snap, and the drumming stops, and I'm like, it's just a spell. It's just so that I can dance and drum at the same time, because I don't have six hands, you know? <laughs> <laughs> She's just grinning. She's, That's just so cool. Yeah, I mean, if I'd known you guys were going to be here, and I do another hand gesture, and a version of me with black hair instead of red hair appears, and pantomimes drumming, but there's no noise. But I didn't think I'd have an audience up here, because, you know, I was just helping these guys um, go after some mushrooms, I guess, and I just kind of look at them still crawling on the ground. But I'm glad to meet oh. you guys. As soon as uh, Deidre summons the clone and there's there, or the the illusion and there's no uh, drumming sound, Whip starts mimicking the drum, nice. um, making drum sounds that like matched the rhythm she'd been playing before. You are awesome. What's your name? <laughs> oh man, I did a bad job that time. <laughs> you're good. You're good. It's it's a whipper wheel call. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can I call you Whistle? <laughs> Lol. Yeah, that's what we call him. That's what we call him. <laughs> okay. He is the most greatest bird thing, besides that other great bird thing. There's two of them now. Whip then oh, immediately points okay. over to Bell Toll and uh, mimics the bell sound. Beltol is taking their scythe and tapping the drum and stepping back. <laughs> <laughs> so at, at this point, I think I'm going to pick up the drum. I've got like a handle on it so I can sling it over my shoulder. And I'm just going to pick it up with two hands and offer it to her. It's just a normal hand drum. You can inspect it if you want to. There's nothing magical about it. It's just some stuff I picked up while I was at sea. Can I do an investigation check on it? Yes, you can. Oh, damn. I guess it's a drum. I was hoping to get something bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, you actually run your scythe through it. <laughs> no! Yeah, it, was a, it was a 17. A so 17. I think, okay, I think uh, Beltol realizes that it it's okay. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, so with the 17, what do you think that she would find, DRJ? Um, I mean, that's a pretty high roll, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty significant. 15 is enough to know a good bit. 20 is she would know most things about it. So I'd say you can tell that there's a magical aura around it. Um... Like, there, there's there's something more to this drum, but the fact that I've said it's a spell... Um... I mean, I don't even know how my drum works yet at this point, so it's hard to say. Uh, but okay. there's definitely something going on with my drum beyond just being a drum. It's the special... The special drum. Indeed. Okay. Noted. Okay, so... Um, as you guys are having this discussion, um, just among all the mushrooms, um, Sparks is kind of starting to bounce off of some different mushrooms, and you see several spores kind of just floating around It's in the air, and it's lovely. The light glints off of them. And Anoki. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How would you like to introduce yourself? So, as he's bouncing, we'll say he lands on my cap. And just like the, the, the general rustle and the sounds that you guys have been hearing to this point have just been 
like a normal field. But as soon as he lands on my cap, you hear like a <laughs> and that's when, <laughs> when the spores come out. And you guys don't think of anything of it right, right away. And I think it's after, great that there's a huge cloud of spores. Maybe I bounce on your head again. <laughs> and as let's say like I can de- I could detect you about to land. And as you're about to land on my cap, I stand up to my full height Ooh. and catch you. Okay. And, then, and, and I look at you, and I put you down gently, like a child. Do you have because... arms that comes out of your stock? Yes. And in your head, you hear, yes, why were you jumping on me? I'm just going to talk to the mushroom and be like, uh, I thought you were uh, like a regular mushroom. <laughs> so I... the before you can say another word, there's a kind of a squeak from the two humans crawling around on the ground, and they just kind of start to like prostrate themselves before you and like worship. And um, you can carry on what you're saying, but I'd also like you to describe what you look like. So, as a, so, th- what the mushroom that you were jumping on was about a four foot diameter, uh, red capped with tiny white flakes all over the top of it. And I, when I stand up to full height, I'm about six foot seven. Uh, my main trunk and my arms and my legs. Because they're basically, as I stand up, you just see the main trunk. And eventually, like, as I stand up, they, my, my arms separate from my sides and my legs kind of separate. They're, like, you can see the crease where the, where the trunk meets the ground. And the color of my stalk is reminiscent of birch bark. And in fact, if you look at it, you can see creases of kind of like a dark ooze coming out in places um and just below the cap you can see just kind of two little like sparks would be able to see it but nobody else would because the cap would be too low for them to see but you can see two blue slits right where the stalk meets the mushroom cap and the two blue slits are glowing and at the point where i see these Two people prostrate themselves before me. I say, don't do that. It is unnecessary. I'm not something to be worshipped. They look at you. And this girl, who who is in a very similar safari-esque garb, um, turns to her mushroom hunting partner and um, she says to him, "Is this is this real life?" <laughs> um, so and Whip Whip doesn't uh, mimic that back, but I do want everyone to know that he's adding that to his list of phrases. <laughs> <laughs> Aurora says that is a great question. Just so everybody knows, as soon as Cerebity sees that a giant mushroom has erected itself around the, in the group, Cerebity hops off of the mushroom that she's sitting on and just looks at it with absolute just, just distress <laughs> and like kind of is waiting for it to turn into another mushroom person. And I, I look over and I see you kind of distressed. I said, no, that one's not on my conid. And by the, by the way, none of you are seeing my lips move at all because I don't have lips. You're hearing me in your heads. Jerbides pulls out her sword and is like, "What? What was that?" Whoa, whoa! Let's let's not attack the locals, okay? And I tried to stand between between Seripides and Inoki. Get out and... of my head! It's the only way I could communicate with you. I don't have oh, a mouth. Is that the mushroom? 
Yes, it's me. And I wave at you. <laughs> Hit me. I put my sword away. Aurora goes running over there, and now she's drawing pictures of the mushroom and poking at him. And How do you do that? What are you? What am I? I'm a myconid. You can't just what are you? Study what they are. Oh my gosh. You can't I'm just ask Aladdin. people why they're white. <laughs> What's an Aladrin? I don't know, sort of weird kind of elf. You're not a dark elf. No, I'm kind of a reddish elf right now. It changes. It changes. Will and you she. You me? Uh, no, no, I don't like mushrooms. She like pat. That's confusing, because you patted him compassionately, but then you told him you didn't like him. I don't like to eat mushrooms. Uh, and she'll, like, sort of hand out this bouquet that she's made over the course of the day of flowers and mushrooms and stuff, and uh, offers it to her little friend, mushroom friend, and asks, um, so what is your name? Then? My family name is Bolette, and... The spore that I was raised from is called Enoki. There's more confusing names. You may call me Enoki. Okay, that's easy. I'm Aurora. Very nice to meet you. That's his name, I think. You're not the most annoying one. I'm Serapides. Excellent oh, to meet you. And I, I look at the, the bird who whistled, and uh, I, I look and I tilt my head, and... Uh, whip mirrors it, tilts his head the same direction. And I, in your head, you hear your whistle back at you. It's really disorienting. Uh, whip just starts nodding emphatically. So... What you what you what you need to what, and everyone in the group can kind of understand this at that point. That me whistling back to him is understanding that that's his name. Is this that particular sound? Mm. Because so the spores that I released are called rapport spores. So you can actually kind of hear some of the thoughts that are going on between all of us. Yes, you can, but you do have some control over it. So it's not like you can Correct. all read each other's minds, but no. you can utilize it as like we a can, telepathic we... communication. It's like awakened mind. Yeah. So like when I when I hear Whippoorwill make his sound, I understand that that's that's his name, and I can actually make the rest of you understand that that's his name as well. I still can't pronounce that. Same. So. I call you Whistle. Um, Whistle. We call him Whistle. You, because of how this works, you can convey more telepathically than you can through your spoken vocabulary. So if you'd like mm -hmm. to give them a different name through the party line, you can. Or you can continue to let them call you Whistle. I think, so when 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 Inoki communicates to everyone that the Whistle is actually his name, um, he starts like nodding emphatically, and so clearly he's affirming that. But then when someone else in the group says, well, we call him Whistle, he, he just parrots that back, and sort of the feeling that goes along with that in your mind would be, you can call me Whistle if you want. Okay. So he's, he's, he's accepting the nickname, but also communicating that the whistling Wait. is his proper name. Yes. That's pretty cool. Do you yeah, have just beaming? I, I had wondered how um, Kenku with Rapport Spores was going to work in terms of, like, can he just, like, telepathically talk? But I kind of don't want to do that. You, you, <laughs> so, yeah. You, you do you. How, so, you could do it how you think. So like you could even like workshop it. Yes. So <laughs> what all what my like. ruling will be on this is that um you can 
use more language if you want to, but it does make sense, uh, and you absolutely can do it this way, to just say the way that you have to think about things to communicate them verbally is also how you would communicate through your thoughts just because you're so used to it. So um, mm -hmm. if whether or not you want to change between the two or just change it later or just stick to your more verbal communication, that's totally up to you. But you do have the freedom to okay. explore, the, yeah. explore the space. I think at least for now I'm going to say that Whip would need some time to figure out that he might have more options. So for now, it'll mm -hmm. just be, he's going to keep mimicking and I might add something as the player to say, and the, like a feeling that goes along with it or, or just sort of extra information. Perfect. That people cool. might get. I love it so much. The indie okay. is good, y'all. Serenity <laughs> <laughs> would kind of brush her hands because she had ration crumbs all over them and kind of gestures and it's like all right can we go now so you say this and the two mushroom hunters who were kind of trying to figure out what the fuck is going on um are now kind of just like sitting they're not, they're not like crawling around anymore but they're just sitting and they look like disturbed and you just overhear them saying, man, we gotta sober up. Like, this is, I think we took it too far. I'm like, well, it was nice to meet you, but I think I've got to take them back to King's Port when they come down. Um... Inoki, do you know how long they're going to be tripping? Do you know anything about the mushrooms in this field? Would I know that, Dungeon Master? I would assume yes. Um, yeah, what do you want I... to know? Just give me either a nature or Survival? medicine. No, nature oh. or medicine. Okay, I'll do medicine. Okay. That will be an eight. An eight. Okay. So, if you eat mushrooms, it's different. Oh, yeah. So, you are not familiar with the concept of what these creatures what mushrooms are do to other people. Apparently, which, experience. Which makes sense. Because you're not a cannibal. I'm assuming. Who says? <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> you don't know me. You don't know what they do. Take the ass out of you and me. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you're you're not totally sure, but you can absolutely give an answer as though you do know if you would like to. So I would probably say, looking at them, uh, and knowing what I know about, um, having seen things like Durgar, as my comparison, or even Drow. And having them eat mushrooms, I would I would probably say that they will not be like this for longer than an hour. Okay, and you do know how long they've been there because you've been there the whole time. Mm hmm. So, yeah, you can absolutely give them this response. Okay. Um, what... So yeah, I would say they be they'll be like this for probably another hour, and then I would probably ask where everyone is going. Where are you guys going? just points. Yep. Yeah, we were kind of heading in a general direction. I don't know, and she, Aurora kind of looks at the group. Uh, do we actually know exactly where we are? Seripides doesn't shrug, but kind of shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> we are north of Kings Bay, Headed to the woods that are north of King's Bay. So you're headed to Winter Glen? Is yeah. That, right? mm -hmm. that place. One. Follow the pointy one. 
Um, DM, since I've been traveling and guiding these guys, do I know roughly where we are? Yeah, you know that you are just south of the Borth Ruins. And you you kind of know... So if you're looking at the map right now, um, Mm -hmm. this whole peninsula with Borth and King's Bay and all of that, um, you're familiar with this area, you're familiar similarly to Seripides about the... um, like some of the main towns on the Lirath forest, but um, you've spent the most time wandering around on this coast area, so um, that's why you got asked to help out these poor fellows. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I have an hour to kill until these guys sober up, there are some ruins I saw, if you guys would be willing to detour for a little bit and explore that with me. But I understand if you have to keep going for your woods, uh, you're just going to have to go further inland and continue north. Ruins sound awesome. Don't they? Ruins sound I just... awesome. Well, if they're north, then they're on our way, so. Yeah, True. I, I kind of look at Inoki, and I'm like, are they going to be okay if I leave them alone, or... You can't I, communicate I don't know. I don't think if they mind. get eaten, they're going to pay me. They should pay you now. Agreed. I like that idea, and I turn to them and kind of squat down. And I was like, so... Could you pay me just for leading you guys up here, and then when you sober up, we'll discuss traveling back home? So maybe half of what we agreed? Give me a persuasion check with advantage, because they're not in their right minds. And I'm <laughs> I'm going to assist by pulling my staff and planning it between them. Okay. <laughs> like a yeah. Oh, no I am there. so glad I got it an advantage. That was a two and a team okay so um this guy roger looks at the girl and it's like i guess that's probably fine and she just kind of shrugs and she's like i mean we're not going anywhere for a while so it's fine and okay, so, so I'm just gonna check out the ruin with these guys. So if I could just get half now, and then when you guys are ready to go, if I'm back, I can lead you guys back. And if I'm not, you guys just saved, you know, a couple of silver. Okay, sure. How how much are we paying you again? <laughs> um, I'm I, I I'm say going to, to you a morality check. <laughs> <laughs> I say to you, and nobody else can hear it through the rapport spores, just ask for the okay. full amount. Okay, that'll be that'll be 20 silver. Like, 20 silver? Wow. And she just kind of That's blinks a few times, and she's like, okay, okay. And um, pulls out her pouch out of her backpack and it's kind of starts counting out coins there's a lot of like pennies and half pennies but she does end up getting you the full amount and her pockets are a lot lighter all awesome. right <laughs> so um you can say you got six silver pieces and okay. what equates to what the remaining be Fourteen. Yeah, for for fourteen silver. So like I mean, if they, if they gave me 40, ten, I would be happy. So. <laughs> like a hundred and forty pennies. Some of them are half pennies, but uh, you know that they are still accepted in this region. Okay. They just, just paid you with of... a piggy bank. So I just kind of give them a tight smile and I shove all of these 
copper pieces in my bag and I'm like, thanks. See you guys in an hour. And then I'm like, I turn to everybody else and I'm clearly way more excited to talk to you guys. All right, come on, let's go. And as you guys are about to turn, I say, may I join you? I've heard there are things to collect in these ruins. Whip just says, follow the pointy one. Of course, I figured you were going to come with us. And I bow my giant mushroom cap and I start following whoever I perceive as the leader. <laughs> Aurora kind of will run up next to uh, Deirdre, kind of just fall in place next to her. Serpides follows the same direction we need to go anyways. Okay, so you guys make your way to some ruins, and it's been a couple hours, so you're nearing like early afternoon. And um, you managed to kind of weave through the mushroomy edge of the forest and out of it, and the mushrooms kind of disperse more. They're not nearly as concentrated as they were before. And you um, start making your way uphill towards the the eastern edge of this strip of land towards the cliffs and you see up above you um, along the road there is a um, fairly significant ruins they are lovely and um, kind of serene in how quiet it appears and I have an image for you that I'll put in player chat. But I'm not uploading it because it's not my image. But <laughs> this is I wonder what, what this is from. I have, I have no <laughs> idea. Oh my god, look at all the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> the tentacles. You, it's just Okay, pictures, you monster. pictures like that are definitely against the Discord terms of service. <laughs> we need to have a I'm talk. Oh, bodies and tentacles. Loki That's... might consider them dead bodies. It's not. It's cool. beautiful. The light is glowing. There's flowers and lovely treasure rooms. chests. <laughs> For Twitch, what she actually did is she rickrolled us. Hey, what guys, you guys are all liars. <laughs> Don't trust any of these fools. This is what you get for using an audio medium. Ah, uh, I know. I uh, now understand hey. Alyssa's pain. <laughs> hey, I'm an audio maximum. Yeah. Wow. Hurt you. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys. I'm bringing that back. Bones. Oh, I'm in so much pain. So. <laughs> this um, is why she beats us, everybody. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, quit. I quit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Serious D and D question. Okay, though. are there actually chests? There is one chest, and it is rusty, and it is half buried in this rubble and moss and little there, birds of grass. But you do see one. Immediately approaches it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you... Whip is not far behind. <laughs> okay, how how far? Like how close are you approaching it? Uh, well, I mean, I guess I, can I roll a perception to sort of see the area around it and just sort of look around? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh no. Oh no, which one? Shit, sorry, I dropped it. Hold Gone on. Gone forever. Oh, that was about the same. Um, <laughs> how about a 23? Okay, a 23, it doesn't seem to be trapped, but you do notice that there are um, what looks like old runes along this, uh, like the rim of this chest that are just very faint there. Um, 
well dusted and well faded by the sun, but they're there. They could, remind you of magic. Would that could I make like an arcana or a religion roll? Yeah. Go ahead and do an arcana roll. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, how's a how's a fifteen get me? A fifteen is good enough. Um, hey. You recognize this as an old dialect from the Isles that nobody speaks, but um, it's, it, it's kind of information that was passed down by the druids of the land. And um, because most of the druids' traditions were passed down through oral communication and didn't use a lot of written language other than their secret language, um, most of your understanding and most people's understanding of the language is gone. So, um, you, but you do recognize that it is old druidic runes. And do you share uh, this? Is uh, this anything that Whip would know? Yeah, I think if Whip is with me, I would just kind of look at, look down at him, and squat down to look at the chest and point at them and say. I think these are ancient druid ruins. Oh my god, thank you. Yeah, thanks Ooh, for the bits, guys. Thank, thanks, Ooh, goodness. <laughs> did bits. So we're, uh, I would probably, if if I can, I'm, I'm assuming that I'm kicking off the report spores every hour so that we can stay in communication. Okay. Um, and if I, I hear you talking about druidic symbols i would probably be my interest would be perked as well i notice would i notice that like you're kind of perking up like do you do anything physically that would like i would i would i would say if it's druidic let me have a look okay i look i look at you and kind of like move my head towards the chest and kind of like do you want to take a look at it so I, i and i assume whip would come with as well yes yeah Okay. Aurora's just looking at it excited and like drawing things in her notebook, drawing pictures of the symbols and stuff. So actually, uh, Deidre hung back a little bit and she's taking some of the pretty white flowers and she wove them into a flower crown that she offers to Aurora. Here, I thought you'd like it. Ah! (laughs) She's so excited. It's so cute. And she puts it on right away. She hugs you. (laughs) <laughs> Deidre is so proud she can't stop grinning new best friend okay. Beltol is going to walk around and kind of inspect things okay so let's see one moment things so um what what order should we do this stuff in so let's start i'm gonna start with the people inspecting the chest um i should have been taking notes on who's doing what so who's all looking at the chest me, Whip, and Anoki so far, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm doing them looking at the chest. Okay, and then Beltol wants to look around the area? Yeah, Beltol's gonna kind of explore the runes and look at some of the carvings, see if they recognize anything. Okay, and Aurora is drawing the stuff she sees on the chest? Yeah, now she's playing with her flower crown, but she was drawing stuff. Okay. Yeah, right. I'm just making flower things for everybody, whether or not they want them. So Okay, that's amazing. So I'm, I'm kind of not paying attention <laughs> because I haven't noticed the chest. I'm just enjoying the field of flowers. And when when Sparks walks up next to Inoki, I'll probably just pick him up and like because my arms kind of just meld into my body, I'll push him in and like my body will grow around him, not like to restrict him. But to just let him rest there. Oh my god, like a baby Bjorn? Kinda. <laughs> oh my god. Like a, it's a burby Bjorn. 
<laughs> I'll kind of like freak out a little bit like whoa 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 what's going on here you're, the mushroom kind of eat me guys you're fine little one you're 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 not dead enough for me to eat <laughs> Seripides for the first time since you guys have met her emits one single chuckle <laughs> and just kind of goes eh. That's it. <laughs> Bell Toll's going to from from a ways away go give him time. <laughs> and I, I look I look up over at Bell Toll and I say this one will be a while yet. Scribbities is loving this conversation. Bell Toll <laughs> lets out the same chuckle that Seripides did. <laughs> well, he was dying when we found him, so it's iffy with him. And and uh, you see me, you see the large mushroom cap shake and say, "No, this one will be a while yet." It's not mine. I just found it. <laughs> I think Seripides would probably turn back to the chest because she really wants what's in that chest. So let, let so what is what is what are these markings that we're looking at? Yes. So do both of you druids speak well you guys so I'm not familiar with all the sub circles, but you still understand the druidic language, right? I read yes. druidic, abyssal, and primordial. Okay, thank you. That was a really complicated way to ask you that question. But um you guys are not familiar exactly with this dialect, but you can still read it, whereas it would be actually impossible for other people to. And um, you can tell that um, this is an old enchantment. And um, go ahead and give me either a nature for your druidness um, rather than religion unless you would prefer religion um or an arcana check and serpides you can give me an arcana check do the druids get advantage because we speak druidic um i will say you, you get like your advantage is inherent in you guys working together okay okay yeah 19 so we get advantage Oh, and I'm doing no, just uh, six. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Sam Ray. I need to turn more sounds off. I think. <laughs> uh, fourteen. Okay, and uh, what did you do? get six. How does nineteen work for you? Okay, Ooh, those are great. Yes, between the fourteen and the nineteen, you guys can figure this out, and um, from your both knowledge about magic and information on druidic, back, druidic backgrounds and um, you are able to decipher that this is um, kind of like a, a guardian enchantment and it has been out here barely in the open but um, the way that it was enchanted is that it got to choose who sees it and um it asks a challenge of those it has chosen see if it's if they are worthy of its contents does it communicate something specific about how to like accept the challenge so i will say as you guys are discussing this and trying to figure out exactly what that means, you hear it sound like someone's clearing their throat from the wall behind this chest, and from around the corner walks a figure that is somewhat familiar to you, Sir Biddies and Whip. Um, and you see a wooden mask with antlers coming out. Ah. And that's where we're gonna take a break. 
So knew it. <laughs> knew it. Yeah, it did sound like that, didn't it? Yeah. So everybody, we're gonna take a, a quick break, and we will return. I'm gonna put a little text box because I still need. A, we're taking a break. Slide on my stream overlay, but. Um, yeah, we will, we will return. Thank you for BRB. watching the stream, BRB. Okay, here's yeah. the text. Gotta make sure it's Comic Sans. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> you gotta put it Papyrus. in like a Papyrus. Criminal. 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 You have to go in font jail now. That's, that's just how she's it works. A, she's a GD monster. <laughs> <laughs> there be taking a short break four exclamation marks and done Boop. okay Boop. all right see you guys
we back. <laughs> we are back. <laughs> uh, that thing we did. Hopefully we didn't just blast anybody's eardrums into outer space, but thank you guys for your patience. We are back for, to continue tonight's episode of Celtic Knot. So, where we left off just before the break, you guys were looking at this magical rune-covered chest and deciphering what it means by a challenge that you need to complete to prove your worth when a buddy from last night emerges from behind a stone wall and is just kind of standing there and you can't see their face but um, they look kind of like <clears throat> arrogant, smug, it's all in like the posture and the crossed arms. And so far they haven't said anything, but they did just step out. And um, Cerebides and Whistle both recognize this figure. Cerebides whip. looks like whip and is just like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Whip just like waves at the figure. Well, don't like... wait. She like pushes his wing down. <laughs> He is not a friend. As soon as I hear I shouldn't assume he's not either. a friend, I I am going to go into stealth, try to hide. Mm -hmm. okay. Which is easy because you can just shift to a shelf behind Anoki and you are completely like obscured. Right, like your yeah. baby Bjorn. I'm not mm -hmm. even going to make you roll for that. You feel okay. suitably stealthed. Once I have suitably stealth, can I um like disattach from a no-key so I can like start to maneuver in case something goes down. Oh yeah. I'm not like like I detect your motion and I just kinda roll with you. Okay. I'll I'll detach then and get on the ground somewhere and uh, start to try and make a a ninety degree angle with the party and this figure so that I'm kind of off to one side. Yeah, flanking. The flankings. Okay. That's fine. So you're kind of making your way around and just trying to not be very obvious about it. And since I have rapport spores on, can I warn him about the like if there's any other like symbols that he can't necessarily see? Warn who? Sparks. About just the terrain, or well, because if there's if there's any kind of sigils that we haven't really figured out what the challenge is mm -hmm. to warn him to kind of avoid touching them yeah you can communicate that to him okay so while you're mentally communicating that the druidic figure says to the group standing by the chest oh hello windows <laughs> uh, I see you've made it to Borth. And in a timely fashion from this morning as well. We appreciate Our... that. So we're cool? Yes. You... By entering into that agreement and keeping your word have warded off some of the potential for terrible things that could have happened at unseemly hours. Oh, we are well. grateful. Well, some of the damages. <clears throat> Whip um, looks at the the druidic creature, tilts his head to one side, and um, mimics it in its own voice from last night and says, If you do not follow through on your word, we will not forget what you have done. Indeed. And then just like goes back to being a cheerful little bird. <laughs> That's adorable. He says, What does he say in response to that? Let's see. That is what I said. And I stand by it. You do remember what you have done. And we would have you be known in these parts. What are you, you called, you who have been chosen 
by this our sacred treasure of the Borth ruins. We are. Felt yeah. makes the, the sound that the door to Gritty McDuff's makes when it opens and closes. We're just delivering a message. Whip parrots Beltel and makes the same door sound. Sounds an awful lot like the AOL opening and closing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hashtag only 90s kid. <laughs> yes. So he will attempt to make the noise back to you. It says, I appreciate your eloquence, but the spoken language is helpful in traveling longer distances. Uh, Bless great. you. Wait, so, so what, was what are you? What am I? What are <laughs> what are you adventurers called by? I kind of like, whistle. I look baffled as at the fact at the idea that we would all have a name. <laughs> so I hit him. I hit him with the rapport spores. Uh huh. And I introduce Whipperwill by the sound of his name. Okay. And so that this guy understands. I introduce myself as Inoki. Okay. And I will let Seripides introduce herself because I get the feeling from her that she would prefer to not necessarily give her name right away. Yeah. Hmm. Seripides likes this mushroom. <laughs> she may be adding mushrooms to her short list of like her diet. She's, mm. which uh. only includes half orcs. <laughs> <laughs> She's like quietly writing mushrooms in a notebook. Uh oh, DJ likes half orcs too, though. Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he says these are each of your names, but you have no name of your group like we we are the druids of the ruins that is the, my clan the ruins birds are fine ruins of what exactly just druid ruins or ruins of times past ruins of society of politics, old worlds. Many things can be ruined. Many things are ruined. And we over we oversee them. Well, alright then. Well, we're certainly not here to disturb any ruin. That's ah. definitely why we came here. But apparently you have been Chosen as worthy of seeing what these ruins have. If you would like to know more of the challenge of the Borth ruins, it would be my duty and honor to tell you. Therapy stands up, quickly faces and shuffles her feet so that she is directly facing the druid now and not the chest. And nods her head. And that's it. Okay, what are the rest of you guys doing as this conversation is taking place? I, w I want to throw a perception check on this guy. Perception or intuition? Or insight? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll do insight. Okay. Go ahead and roll me an insight. Dirty 20. Oh, nice. Ew. Okay. So, um, you can't see this person's face, and their voice is kind of ambiguous, and they just have an aura of mystery about them, but you think that, 
although you have no idea what this um, kind of druid cult is about or what their purpose is, you think this person is being straightforward with you about why they are there and about the ruins kind of business with you. Do I detect there? I mean, they're actual druids, which usually means they're balanced with nature. There's no ill intent here other than protecting what's here. Or I can't detect that with this, this check. Sorry, say that again. So there, this, he's a druid mm -hmm. and I, like, I can't detect any ill intent other than like the only intent that he has is to protect what's here. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay. That is correct. His, if he yeah. has business, it's not with you specifically. It's just you happen to be the ones that intersect yeah, we're in with his, his job. We're in his business. Yeah. Okay. Do you relay that to us? Or... Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Just I say me. he's he's on the up and up, and he feels like we are the interlopers. And I say <laughs> that just to... I say that to the entire group. Aurora's just looking around confused, just like, who is this guy? What agreement did we make? What? Oh, I guess. And I, I, I'll I, relay because I kind of know what you guys did through kind of your communication right now. And I can kind of relay that to everybody else. Cool. So I think what my character is doing is leaning against the closest ruins to the group, just kind of observing everything, but not directly interacting yet. Uh, my character has been... Oh, go ahead, Whip. Uh, I was going to say, um, Whip is going to slowly approach this stranger. He's just going to start inspecting his, like, regalia and whatever else, just kind of looking... A little bit too closely, maybe maybe a little bit inside personal space, but just looking at stuff on on the person. Um, and unless the unless this creature reacts to that in some negative way, he's just going to be doing that sort of innocuously. Okay, um, it kind of does the whole head and antlers tilt towards you, and um. Because he's near the wall and the vines and this crumbling stone archway, you can tell he's been conscious of not, like, getting his mask tangled up in anything, but um, it seems second nature. And it just kind of watches you, but um, is not apparently bothered by it. Yeah. Well, uh... While they were talking, and once the chorus wars had been put on everybody, so that the uh, so that the character with the mask could be talked to, I introduced myself as sneaky, 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 sneaky. Oh, grasshopper! Ooh, sneaky, 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 sneaky. By the time we get to the woods, there's gonna be so many people in this party. Is this guy gonna join us too? Sneaky, 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 sneaky. <laughs> Are you saying these things like to like? I'm saying them in. I'm saying them in my head, but I don't. I don't realize. Okay. Hear them as no, well but now. it wouldn't work that way. Like you, you, you would have to impart it directly to someone. Oh, I'm thinking them towards him. Oh well, that's okay. You can do what you want. Because <laughs> I, because I'm gonna I'm, be like, okay, I'm, you want to say this stuff to him? I'm looking intently at him and going, sneaky, 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 sneaky. This is what I do when I'm sneaking around and I don't want people to see me. And when you when you do this, I realize what's going on and I think to Bell Toll, maybe you were right. This one will be collected sooner than later. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm assuming this probably blows myself. Of course I was right. <laughs> So, we have a deal? Uh, but, so, DM here. 
still referring to him telling you about the stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we're we're all kosher with this happening. Because I want this. I want he whatever is. is. Yeah. As long as you guys are. I mean, you're obviously giving indication as yes, but he is apparently waiting for kind of a unanimous vote. Right. So I'll I'll throw it out to the group as like, hey, yay or nay, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll even because I don't know any of you that well. If you say nay, I can I can tell how many nays there are without telling who said it. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be like, no, no, we shouldn't jump him. He looks pretty like he's not going to take this. I will do it. I Her just, says out loud. I'm always happy to help. Can I roll to see if I know anything about this area or religion or anything like that? Well, depending on what you roll for the specific topic, you will get different results. So what is it you're looking to know? Basically a a religion check to see like what, what I know about these people in this area. Okay, sure. Like if they're on the up and up. Yeah. That's a, an 11. An 11. Okay, so um, you know a bit about druids, but their religion specifically is kind of scattered depending on region. And um, you don't know the history of this specific druid's following. Like what, what they're about, whether they're more objectively good or bad. Um, so, from a religion standpoint, you just are not really sure. So, DM, do I know anything? Like, are there that I would have heard on my travel? Your voice cut out in the middle there. So, while I was at sea or telecontinents, would I have heard? anything about this? Are there any songs or legends about these druids or this area? Um, go ahead and give me a history check. Okay. I know nothing. That's a seven. Okay. <laughs> you know probably around the same thing, just that like there are druids. These are well-known magical islands and um, well, I- islands well known as magical and full of mysterious things and weird things that kind of defy what physics in reality think should be. Um, and you're not not really sure of much beyond that, for sure. Okay. There are druids. I'm... Druids do things. That's about it. Yeah. Then I'm I'm gonna look at Anoki. I'm not gonna respond to the guy, but I'll say I'm in. Just kind of think it at him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is there anyone else who still needs to cast their? Uh, I think Cal. Or whistle. Yeah. As as Is soon it? as um as soon as Anoki sent out the indication to people that. Uh, you should say yay or nay. He he steps back out of the other druid's um, personal space and just raises up a hand, like okay. like he's volunteering. Okay. Okay. So everybody look- steps forward. And it, and it and it looks like we've got a majority even without Noki's vote. So I will I will impart that to well Sparks. Sparks said no, Sparks, right? Sparks, Sparks said no, but I'm pretty sure he didn't understand the question. Yeah, Sparks said no, I don't think we should jump him. He, okay. he looks like he's not trying to hurt us. Okay. And then everyone else wants to jump him, though, so I don't know. Now I'm just waiting. Okay. <laughs> so you communicate this to the druid, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so he... Gives you a solemn nod and acceptance, and um, steps forward out of the archway of the door and 
um, s steps down a couple pieces of rubble and circles around the chest and puts a hand on it very, very lightly. He says, I have been watching over this area for a long time. There was a story passed down to me by my elders. And in this story, there was a very powerful druid. And this druid, rather than the usual tools of our trades, staves and wooden creations to use in battle, things gifted from nature, use the power of nature to shape this wand. And it had too much power. In fact, many people sought it out and many people were killed. This wand changed hands many times until finally it was locked away. And here it has been ever since. We enchanted it in a way that would keep it from falling into the wrong hands until a time that it decided it needed to return to the material plane. But as a safeguard, to make sure it did not fall into the hands of someone easily removed, or at least not too easily removed, we created this challenge around it. You, if you would seek this wand, you must go deeper into the ruins and bring back three flowers. Three flowers? Three flowers. They are small, they're golden, and feathery. But the journey is perilous. Small, gold, feather flowers. Yes. yes. As he lists off small, golden, and feathery, I'm picking dandelions. I'm like, small? Yep. Golden? Yep. Feathery. And I'm kind of looking like, oh. I don't know. That's not feathery. I put it down. <laughs> I, I actually have the head cannon where Sparks would take it and he'd be like, yeah, this is it. And he holds it up like it's his mom. And he's holding up. I picked two flowers. <laughs> um, so Whip is going to crouch down and make himself as small as he can. Um, and then use Druidcraft to create a, just a, a very faint like golden glow near himself. Okay. So he becomes small, golden, and feathery. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is very impressive. And then, he, and then he repeats it. Small, golden, feathery. <laughs> Aurora's <laughs> making notes of the description that he gave us in her little notebook. So, okay. where will we find these flowers? At the center of this ruins. Uh, any tips before we go in? Stay alert. Bring what you need. And if you truly are the ones who should have this, you won't die. Well said. Sounds like an adventure. Serpity starts walking without seeing if anybody towards the ruins. Wh Whip yeah, is going to follow the pointy one. Okay, the rest of you? I will, I will follow as well. So I'm kind of walking slowly. I'm towards the edge of the group and I'm just kind of smiling and like super enthused, but I'm also definitely walking really slowly at the edge of the group. Okay. So, this is not a very 
complex ruin system. It's not a labyrinth or anything. Um, yeah. So it's not it's not exactly maze like, but there are a lot of obstacles and um, broken down walls and paths. So um, can we can we use uh, can we use basis to sort of see if anything is <laughs> coming about? Use what? Never mind. Sorry, bad bad B O T W joke. Oh. <laughs> I missed it, I, just because I didn't hear what you were saying. I heard a boot. I heard a boot, that's all. Uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> can I roll a perception to sort of see see what I can see about where we're walking towards? Yeah. You guys can all do yeah. perceptions, and we'll, we'll use that as the group average. What time of day is it? It is... Ooh. Um, it's afternoon. Yeah, it's probably around like three or four p.m. So as you can okay. see in that picture, it's kind of the, the light's getting a little golden. Are there are there shadows, there shadows so enough so that I don't have to I roll for my sun sickness? There's enough shadows. Yeah, if you're careful or cautious about it. Okay, yeah. If, everybody, we're... just uh, send in the ch chat channel what you're number is so that I can just see it. That's perfect. Which chat channel? In... We're, we're in ruins that are sort of like above ground walking around between stuff on ground. We're not like going down into a tunnel or something. No, right? you're not You're not going underground. There are parts okay. where um, it looks like the floor gave out and there was some stuff under it, but um, for the most part, that's just like a, because the of the hills kind of function rather than um it, it seeming to lead underground if that makes sense hopefully great okay sorry you like cut out and i missed half of what you said oh no okay um <laughs> Know if everybody else heard and I was just the only one. But I didn't hear. I anything. got it. I think. So I just added all of our roles um, and divided it by the number of us, and it equals twelve for possession. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, but I credited. Yeah, well, yeah. I was yeah, wondering if also, you wanted to modify that though. Depending on the DC, it's probably four successes out of seven, unless you count the crit as two, or whatever. Yeah, Depending so your... so your successes outweigh. So you have like a good perception, not okay. like perfect, cool. not bad, not mediocre. So it's good. That's how I, that's how I'm doing it, rather than a specific number. Okay. For this. Also, I would like to try and um, go into stealth and conceal myself on top of Anoki, so I can leap from that position, if need be. You you want to blend into the mushroom cap? Yeah, I want to just kind of like I'm since it's like this very large cap. You wait. You usually keep your cap kind of tilted forward so that it hides part of part of you, right? Yeah. Do you want? Do you want to be my halfling backpack? Yeah, I could do that. I'll just I'll just hang <laughs> on behind you. That'll that'll yeah. work better. I was gonna and say sit, sitting on there. top of somebody is not that's very not stealthy. stealthy. Yeah, but, but I was thinking you're... it was tilted the other way so that. The cap was tilted up so I could hide behind it, kind of thing, but it's actually tilted the opposite. So it's tilted like forward and a little bit to the right. And yeah. if you if you like are my backpack, no one in front of us can see you. Yeah, because I also have the thing where I'm a size smaller because I'm a halfling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll hide behind you then. I'll just hang on to the back of you like a tree trunk. Yeah, and like like I would actually grow like if you wanted to hang on there. I would make it so like my stock would have handholds for you. Okay, that works out. Like those kitty climbing walls. Yeah, kind of like that. Okay, so you got that figured out. <laughs> so, okay, who's doing that? Who's is that? Who's Sorry. Windows? <laughs> it's so this is why we can't have nice. If things. we <laughs> if we're gonna have. 
It's not my tablet. I don't understand the settings. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I was just so, gonna say if if we're gonna have like more computer noises and stuff, it might be better to move to push to talk. That's all. That's all I was gonna say about it. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, I'm I'm turning it off. You got called out. Called by the DM. out. Yeah, you're in trubs. No, you're grounded. No, no you guys, it's kind of fine. We're we're not gonna follow the pointy one anymore. No, well, that's fine. She doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So, um, also, Alora, I would like you to know that the chat thinks you might be Canadian. Are you? Me? Yes. Oh boy, howdy. <laughs> what was that? That's I... not Canadian. <laughs> yeah, I was it's not hoping... Canadian. I was no. hoping that would deter everybody. Well, okay. Okay, welcome That's to, the to uh, Celtic Knot, also known as like. Uh, Technical technological lovers united. So, uh, <laughs> well, let us return to this Dungeons and Dragons. Um, you you guys are making your way through and kind of keeping a, a good eye out on your surroundings, and um, you start to see these brambly little piles of twigs and. Um, just like shattered wood, just kind of scattered around. You see some broken barrels. Um, you see twisted trees just kind of growing out of different places. Some are fairly healthy looking. It's this beautiful landscape, but others are not that great. And you have your eye on this one, um, Serpides and whoever else is in the lead. And you... I think you see it move, um, and I'd like everyone to roll for initiative. Ooh. I thought we should have a scrap. That's a seven for Deidre. <laughs> That'll be a fourteen for Seripides. Fourteen for Whip. Okay. Gotta get a new page going here. My Nine notes. for Bell Toll. Okay. So, so um, Anoki and Aurora, which one of you guys like would like to go first? Because you both got a sixteen. I'm not doing That's it based fine. on dex. Sparks got a seventeen. I'm minus one dex. Oh, I'm plus two. No, no, no. I'm not doing it based on that. I just want you guys to oh. decide between you. Go ahead. Okay. I would say Aurora go first. Okay. Are you good um, with, that? Okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Alrighty, so I've got Sparks, Aurora. Doesn't matter, Anoki. Sparks goes first. Yeah, but it's yes. still for breaking ties on shared initiative. Yes, that's what I that's the purpose of that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fourteen is whistle. It does matter. Don't tell me what doesn't matter. <laughs> the yeah, I'm just. It I'm gonna sass all gosh, of you guys. She's gonna hit me afterward. Oh my gosh! Stop I, making the people think that I'm abusive. I'm not. This. this it, it, it is physically impossible for that to happen. <laughs> I mean, I could fly to the other say. side of the United States. Yeah, that would be just, a hell of a thing to do. Like, give you the softest slap on the hand. That's all. That's like all a high five. Yeah, I would just. And be... then I would, I would, I would joke you out and give myself a high five. You oh. think that would happen, but we'd both do that at the same time. I would give myself high five. Yeah, I think we you... would. Yeah. I... Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly what would happen. I'm glad we cleared that up. Okay, so uh, these buddies. Ooh, ooh. Those were two very different oohs because you couldn't tell. <laughs> one was good and one was less good for us. Yes. Wait, One we're, was we're a natural dudes. 20. Blah, blah, no, no. Blah. That ain't right. And the other one was like a natural one, so. It was very varied. Okay, so you see this thing move, and um, it gets to go first. And the twisted branches of this... Uh, creature or tree perhaps just kind of shakes off some of the 
um, dust and earth and branches that it was kind of entombed in and lifts its hands up and out of them shoot several small needles. So it's going to make a ranged weapon attack against Seripides, who is in front. Now oh, hell. And what is your initiative, Seripides? Mm -hmm. Uh, plus two, two initiative. What did you roll for it? Oh, I got a 14. 14, okay. Oh, okay, then, uh, do you or Whistle want to go first? Uh, it's up to you. I can go first. Okay. Cool, I was like, I'm missing someone. It me. It you. Okay, so... Oh, wait, does that mean it's... Uh, no, so, it, okay. you're just in front, so, um... It's, it's just going to do a roll at you, and that is going to be a natural three, so it does not hit. And the noodles shoot. The noodles? Oh, God. The noodles, the, the noodles, the noodles shoot past Ooh, you yeah, harmlessly. I regret my life. We have a delicious stream here. It passed, no! me, it passed to me harmlessly. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, you get an inspiration for groans. <laughs> yeah, two and three. I was trying to be so cool. <laughs> in post in post game, I gotta tell my joke. Oh, oh yeah, so very cool. You do. It's such a long joke. You can tell that at our uh, post game chat. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, yeah, it, the noodles are harmless, and. Um, because it got a bump, bump, it get, it's it's gonna go again. No. Mm. <sighs> I was gonna shoot more noodles. Just I okay. listen, kids. This is gonna do a thirteen to hit. Does that do anything? She will pull this game over right now. I will Wait. pull pull turn this game around. Does a thirteen hit meet your armor class or beat it? It it does. What is your armor class? It's 12. Okay, so it will hit then. And it can is. I, can I like use my inspiration to make you. No, it's fine. You can hit me. <laughs> what? No, it's okay. <laughs> so that's gonna be. I'm just worried that Stockholm you're gonna. Syndrome. Seven I'm... piercing damage. No! As a handful of thick needles. It's kind of noodles. No noodles poke into you. They are spaghetti. But they're undercooked, so that's why they hurt. Right. Yeah, uh, they're uncooked. Yo. Uh, and the pointy one just got pointier. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that is going to be the end of its turn, and it just kind of shuffles a little bit out um, of where it was entombed, and it is standing. It is fairly humanoid. And stands taller than your smallest folks in the party, so it's pretty decently sized. Um, and now it's going to be Sparks' turn. Okay, how big is this uh, this tree? It's bigger than you, but well, smaller than an oki. It's bigger smaller than a red than... box. It's smaller than a whale. Okay. So it's smaller than Anoki. I'm going to attempt to kind of roll off of Anoki off to one side while maintaining stealth so I can flank it. Okay. Give me an acrobatics check. Um, so it was a natural 19, but once I add acrobatics, it's 27. Oh, oh man. man. I was going to assist you. That's ninja. Yeah, so... You pull that off, and it looks so anime. So good. Can I use my dash? Because I get to, um, as a rogue, I can use either dash, disengage, or hide. Can I use dash to... How far away is it from us? Um, it's just down the the path a little bit. So it's, it's probably like 25 feet away. Okay. Um, so I could use regular movement to get to it without dashing. Yeah. If I were to dash to it, would I then have enough movement to jump onto it? 
What, like, to grapple it, or? To jump onto it, so I'm attacking, like, on it. Oh, you, I, I mean, do, depending on what your attack is, you can be, like, at a space. You can't share the same space, but, uh, like, narratively speaking, you can definitely be jumping in, like, hitting it or whatever. Faux show. Sure. Okay. Even yeah. as a creature that's one size smaller than it, I still can't share the same space. You gotta be two sizes smaller. Oh, okay. Must be yeah. smaller. <laughs> okay. So well, for, for a large to... size creature, this is a medium sized creature. For yes. a large size, you could be in the same space. Okay. I will uh, zip, I will roll off of the Noki and zip up to it, hopefully unnoticed, and then just slash at it with my rapier. Okay. Go ahead and roll an attack. He's on push to talk, that's why it's eerily quiet. <laughs> that is a 8 for the attack. An 8. Okay. An 8 does not make purchase, so you describe describe how you're attacking it real quick um so i'm essentially after i rolled off of the noki and zipped over to it i'm just gonna pop out of the out of the underbrush or whatever's near it that would reveal me from cover and kind of slash at the at the base of the trunk a little bit okay so you, you do a slash and it does technically hit because it's this is not like wiggly noodle tree <laughs> it is not um and so it does kind of bite into the bark but it doesn't do anything okay yeah. as a rogue i've never played a rogue before how does sneak attack work for the extra d6 of damage do i have to get a hit for that to do anything so um sneak attack if i recall if somebody else knows better remind me but um, i think you need so to you have can, you you can add it to your attack uh, if you hit, and if you either had advantage on the attack or the um, target is engaged with an ally. Okay, right, right. And you get advantage on it by attacking it unknown, like, surprise. There's, so, yeah, I mean, there are a bunch of different ways to get advantage. Yeah, you can get advantage by flanking. You can get advantage um, by using inspiration or some other feature like that. And Fairy fire. Fairy fire, yeah. There's there's plenty of things to get advantage, but you have that is one of the requirements. Um, also, if it has one of its allies within five feet of it, so if you have two enemies right in front of you, then you'll be able to use sneak attack against that one. It's, okay, sounds good. Yeah, it's a little bit complicated, but you'll figure it out. So I'll then uh, I'll then use my my cunning action to disengage and hop back into the shadows off to one of its sides. Okay. So are you trying to hide? Yeah, I guess I'd be trying to hide again. Mm. You don't have more movement unless you dash, but then you right. use up your but bonus But then I action. wouldn't have my, my disengage. Okay, yes, so I can that's... disengage, but, but only move like five feet away from it. You, but you are a halfling, right? You have twenty-five feet. Of oh, right, right. I don't even have thirty feet of movement. Okay, so yeah, I guess I just stay there. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, now it's going to be Aurora's turn. Um, Aurora's kind of upset about the fact that this tree is attacking us and normally wouldn't just attack something willy-nilly, but since it's kind of already happening, uh, she'll reflexively reach out and uh, cast Witch Bolt. Um, so I have a ring spell attack. Okay. Uh, which is going to be 21 total. That hits. Um, so it'll do... How close are you standing to this, by the way? Um, that's a great question. I would would have have been too far away from where Seripides was because I was following her in. So I you tell. Well, I I believe the range of which bolt is thirty feet. Um, so you just need to be anywhere within thirty feet of it. Um. 
So I just wanted to know if you like moved up to it or if you stayed farther back. Uh, she'll probably want to stay on the far end, end of 30 feet. Okay. But within like a clear line of sight because she doesn't want it to like get anybody else on accident or anything. Okay, sounds good. Uh, and so, it's yeah, gonna do me the damage. Eight. eight damage. So we're looking at eight damage. Okay. Awesome. And it kind of zip zaps around, but it stays connected to the creature unless I do something different. Yes. So what does it look like? What is a witch bolt for Aurora? Um, I think in this season, her witch bolt might sort of just be like regular lightning. Um, maybe sort of bright like the lightning you might get during a, a fall storm or something. Ooh. I'm in love with you already. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? Uh, nope. I think that's it for now. Okay, Anoki. Um, so I have, uh, Sparks is nearby there. Is adjacent to the, the creature? Yes. Yep. Okay. So I am not going to use Ice Knife. <laughs> um, I'm going to use Chill Touch. Okay. Is that, that uh, is. touch range? Uh, no, it's a 120-foot range. Oh, that's confusing. Oh, it's because it's the hand that comes off, right? Oh, yeah. So okay. the way Chill Touch works for Inoki is it's it says skeletal hand, but what it actually is is it's, it's like infesting the target with mushroom spores. Hmm. And so I'm going to make a ranged okay. spell attack. Okay. And that's going to be a seven, so no, nothing happens. Nope. So, well, things still happen, but it doesn't so, do the thing you want. <laughs> so the thing I'm trying to do is grow these mushroom spores in it to hold it in place and cause necrotic damage. Okay. Basically, the spores are sucking the life out of it. But it doesn't do that because it, they can't catch purchase in the park. Yeah, so they still go over and they do find their little burrowing ways into wood but it unfortunately just kind of makes it into that dead wood that it was buried in and so yeah. it just kind of sloughs some of that off this this play is looking jacked <laughs> is there anything <laughs> else you'd like to do on your turn um how far away is it um if you're farther back in the group, it's probably like 30, 35 feet away. I'm going to close the distance to about 15 feet. Okay. Sounds good. And I am relying on your guys' help in remembering where you are positioned, because I'll try to remember, but I need your help too. So next, oh. next up is Seripides. Seripides. Um... Let's see. So, if I recall, I'm right smack in front of it. Yeah. Uh, as per the use. Yeah, you're not you're not like in melee range, you, but you can move forward towards it or okay. away, whatever you would like to do. I would like to find out where my D twenty went. Do. And then I would like to go up within five feet reach. Okay. Um, so you're going to be I, next I, to Sparks. Right. I think I, yeah, I think I'm close enough that I would be able to do that. Yeah, you and, can do that. Um, while I'm doing that, I would just like <laughs> look down at Sparks very briefly and just like roll my eyes like I can't believe like what are you doing and then I will attack this tree thing with my long sword okay go ahead and roll an attack oh wait that's not what I need to roll anyway does she get advantage because the creature's being flanked um so flanking 
Some GMs require that there's one person on each side exact opposites. Okay. I use cone rules, so if you're looking at a um, like a, a grid of nine with the bad guy in the very center of the mm -hmm. grid, um, if you're on the bottom row in the middle, you can get flanking advantage if somebody is on one of the top row spaces. So that's that's how I present it. So you get a little bit more wiggle room, but standing right next to each other still doesn't really count as flanking. Okay. Uh, I tried, guys. Yeah, well, now you know, so you can do that in the future if you would so like. The answer is always no unless you ask. <laughs> um, can I use my inspiration to re-roll because I got a bad roll? Sure. One of my inspiration. Yes. Okay. Do I have to like do like do I have to describe anything on how I use it or can I just do like use it? Um you can No, why not? Describe describe how you come back with the second roll. Okay, well that's a little better. Um how's the nineteen? Nineteen how's a nine? hits. Great. So I attack once and I think it like what threw me off is having to step around maybe not around but like i i kind of step over arcs a little bit and i think that kind of throws off my balance at first but then i'm like we're a team we're working together and it kind of for some reason that inspires me in the heat of the battle that i'm in and i'm able Love to it. hit him awesome <laughs> and my damage is Seven damage. Seven. Okay, and you are adding your damage modifier friends strength or dex or whichever one it is. Uh is that like beyond the like one D eight plus two? That's Oh no, required. that that's the plus two, so Okay, yeah. Yeah, got it. Okay, so seven. Okay. Um, um Sorry, just doing math. Apparently, I can't right now. Um, describe to me how you chop this into bits. You have killed mm -hmm. this blight. Oh, I get it. I get to describe oh, how. Blah, blah. I... Yeah, describe it. Describe its death. Oh man. I don't okay. want to do this. No, so... no, that's saved for special moments. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think. Seripides would just sort of be bored of this at this moment because she knows she's really cranky. She didn't sleep last night because she had to make sure these idiots woke up early. She is hungry still. She didn't get to finish her ration snacks. And I think she would just raise her long sword up and just split it right down the middle. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. And then I put my away. All right. So um, this blight kind of just explodes between the lightning zipping into it and this long sword cleaving it in two. And um, it just kind of falls to pieces in the ground. Um, now you see that from behind it, kind of crawling over the broken part of this wall is the second blight. And it's going to be Whistle's turn. Okay. So how about how far away is the second one? Like, is it more or less just behind where the first one fell? Yeah, it was pretty much just or... behind it. There is probably about 10 feet between where it is currently and the remains of the first blight. Okay. So I'm going to move... Um, into melee range with it, um, but about halfway, like on my way to it, about halfway there, I'm going to uh, use Spirit Totem. Excuse me. Uh, Bless you. So I, I can, um, uh, I I can pick what spirit this totem appears as. It's a bonus action. Um, I'm choosing a Hawk Spirit. 
So, um, uh, when a creature makes an attack roll against a target in the spirit's aura, you can use your reaction to grant advantage on the attack roll. In addition, you and your allies have advantage on wisdom perception checks in the aura. Okay. Um, Just remind a, me a, of those functions as well. Yeah, it's a 30-foot radius around the point where the spirit totem is. Um, and I can, as a bonus action on another turn, I can move the spirit up to 60 feet. Okay. And uh, it lasts for a minute. I only have one use of this ability per short rest, but okay. I figure I want to use all my fun toys. Yeah, I mean, this <laughs> so is Dungeons and Dragons. I am going to summon this hawk spirit and use it to give me advantage on a melee attack against this target. Okay. So go ahead and make your attack. Uh, that would be a 19 to hit. What are you attacking it with? A scimitar. Okay. Uh, a 19 definitely does hit. Okay. Then my damage is 1d6 plus 3. So that'll be 7 damage. Okay. Magic number today. Yeah, as usual. <laughs> okay, anything else you'd like to do? Um, nah. He's just gonna... Stand there. He's got a, so a scimitar in one hand and a pretty small shield in the other hand. Um, just okay. In place, ready to get hit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Beltol. Beltol looks displeased. They were very happy to be exploring these ruins. Um, being a cleric of Kalimbor, there are scales on either side of the scythe that Beltol burns incense in. Beltol will pick up some of these ashes and blow them at this blight using sacred flame. Ooh. Okay, so that's a save on my end, right? That is, well, it's just a cantrip. Yeah, but, but yeah, I, I have to do a deck save. Dex. Okay. It is. It is a dex save or take one d8 radiance damage, okay, and you get hot. no benefit from cover. Nice. So that <laughs> that is hot. So that uh, they got an eleven. Does that save? My my spell save DC is thirteen. Okay, so they fail, so they will take the damage. So how much damage? Will this blight take? Eight. Eight. Okay. Oh. That, <laughs> that also decimates this blight, so please describe its death as to us. These are they look like trees, right? Yes. Like so these embers are uh, very fern gully as they spin around and circle, catching onto the branches, slowly lighting this thing onto fire and watching it uh, blow away in the breeze. That's beautiful. Also, fern gully makes me cry every time. <laughs> I know, just thinking that makes me cry. I sad. know. Oh, my heart. And thank you, Akin Grimes, who says, for him does the bell toll, it tolls for cupcake. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you guys are now out of initiative. Sorry, dear Jay. We will have to see what happens with you next. <laughs> well, actually, someone someone took seven points of damage at the beginning. Can I see who that was? That was Seripides. That was me. So, she got yeah, noodled. I... I got noodled. Oh my god. I, I just want to look at you and say um, thank you for protecting me and roll healing word if I could. Mm. Oh. You absolutely can. And give you I am not kidding you. I wish I could show you but I just yes. You cut out you just what? what? I rolled exactly a seven. I wish I. Oh my gosh! Go. Well, you I believe so you because you guys have, have extra perfect integrity, and you will never lie to me. 
Mm -hmm. That wasn't a threat. That was just stating the facts. So, well, I am close enough to the so let's be let's be clear. We're too stupid to lie to you. <laughs> no, I know you guys would like inflict it's punishment. Too fun when bad things happen in D and D. To exactly. try to prevent them from happening. Exactly. Like it, just, said. it makes it more fun to fail sometimes. Yeah. So that's why I trust and you guys. It gives me more things to collect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like yourself. Mm -hmm. So um you guys so actually, firstly, DJ, please take an inspiration. That was very beautiful and poetic. Oh, okay. Um and you guys now have these Two piles of like ash and broken stuff from the blights. Um, you can continue on into the ruins if you would like. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, you make Everybody your way. Walking. Follow the pointy one. <laughs> so you guys make your way around a couple corners, and you think you're approaching the center, at least. The, the lines of this structure seem to indicate that you're nearing a focal point. Um, you notice f the farther you get into, the more the walls seem to curve, and you realize that this is a circular ruins, which you couldn't quite tell from the outside. It was bigger than you thought. It was bigger on the inside. It was bigger on the inside. And wow. <laughs> you find yourself in... Uh, what's the word? In a kind of amphitheater, uh, there are levels of broad, just sl slabs of stone. Um, there are stairs. Some of them have sunken into the earth a little bit. There's patches of grass growing from between the cracks and all of these different stair-like structures and at the very center, inside of a ring of stone pillars, you see a statue, and it is covered in creeping vines. Oh, God. And the vines, rather than kind of overtaking it, seem to really complement it. It's beautiful. And among these vines, you see three blossoms with feathery golden petals that just kind of faintly glow between all the vines. And I roll myself a perception check. You can. Specifically on this thing that the vines are growing on. The statue? Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, uh, Does that count? What was it? Oh, 16. Sorry, oh. I'm on the... <laughs> a 16 is just fine. Um, you're still at a distance. You haven't approached it yet, but it does seem um, like it... It could have been a shrine long ago. Certainly, its positioning in this um, ruins is very temple-like. And um, you can't make out exactly who this god, if it is a god, might be. Or at least who this statue could be of. But um, that that's definitely what it seems to be. And it is a little bit kind of ominous that it's overgrown in some ways. I think Serpides would probably turn to uh, Enoki and I think Beltol is the other one that was super interested in the Arcana and just kind of point at the statue and just sort of like, what do you think? Beltol is going to uh, close her eyes and kind of move their little feather fingers and uh, cast Detect Magic. Okay. Let's see. So 
With Detect Magic, you get to know what's magical, where it is, and what type of magic. Is that right? I, I get an aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic, and I learn its school. Okay. So... You can sense it's just a faint aura around the statue of just like faint divine magic and um you think it even could be just the area itself is um kind of magically sacred if not exactly a holy ground um there is definitely just like a sense of magic in the area But other than that central feature, there's nothing that particularly stands out to you. So what do we, we, can we tell what the statue is of? You can roll me a religion check for that. Can I roll one as well? Yeah. Holy cow. Okay. That's a 22. It's a Ooh. nat 20. Blah, blah. I know. I, like, I, I, I think I need to stop rolling. <laughs> And I got a 14, so I don't know as much. Okay, but so I've been rolling single, like, ones in my just playing around over here, but... <laughs> you just used up all the bad luck, and all you have left is good, so... Um, you can tell... <clears throat> you're looking around this area, and uh, you're looking at the ground around this statue, and you see that the pattern around the statue is that of a solar disk. And um, it could even be that the statue itself acts as a kind of sundial. Um, and between the solar disk and the standing stones around it in a ring, you recognize this as a... Um, a statue of Belenus, the god of sun, light, and warmth. Sun, light, and what? Warmth. Warmth. Sorry, you cut out. Sorry. No, it's okay. So do I know anything about the conjunction of her with these flowers? You... You probably do not. These are not flowers that you have ever seen before, and that includes you druids as well. Um, this is very, very much a rarity in all of your experience. Hmm. And the magic is faint here. Yeah, it's not, there's not anything specifically super magical about this area specifically, other than it is somehow tied into faint divine magic. How far is the group from the statue right now? You are about 60 feet away, maybe more. Um, it's farther down the steps into the center of this amphitheater. Uh, does does... Beltal communicate any of the stuff that they figure out about this? No, uh, I think um, Beltal kind of realizing what's going on is going to continue to approach the statue and maybe clean it, clean it off a little bit okay. to make it more presentable. Okay, so clear the vines and flowers off of it. Um, most of the most of the vines, but not all of them, just so that it can receive its proper respect. Okay, so as you approach it, I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw as you get about half the distance to it. Eleven. Eleven, that is just good enough. So you kind of feel... My autobiography one. 
you, you, you are just overwhelmed by just a oh, is that? thick and earthy musk that's emanating from the plant matter around the statue, and that's what it was. Would you like, are you going to keep approaching and to clear off the vines? I think uh, at that point, Beltol would probably look around since things have gotten weird and see if they can notice anything that uh, is off. Okay. The rest of the um, party, what are you guys doing? So about how far away from the statue was Beltol when they had it's whatever episode. reaction? Yeah, that I'm assuming we all saw some sort of reaction. Yeah, so you, how you, far away? Well, it was at the halfway point, so you think so somewhere feet. around thirty feet. Okay. Um. So, Whip is going to come up, like basically tr try and get as close to whatever invisible boundary as possible. Um, and then reach out and uh, cast Druidcraft to try and make one of the golden feathery blossoms loom a little bit more okay so wait how close are you getting i'm trying to get within a range of 30 feet because that's the range of druidcraft okay <laughs> but um he's trying to avoid getting into the range of whatever seemed to affect Beltol. <laughs> okay but if so... but if he has to then he will so you get to the range of 30 feet and that is within its range as well, whatever this mm -hmm. is. And um, the faint scent really becomes a lot stronger at this distance. And um, before you can use your druid craft, I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw as well. Thought so. Uh, that will be a 17. Okay. You two are just briefly assailed by this, but you give your beak a little shake and you're fine so so whip looks over at beltol and says the birds are fine and then casts druidcraft to um make one of the blossoms bloom more okay so you do this and um at first there was just kind of just like faintly uh, they just look like feathers like you might see on like a a quill pen or something like that but now mm. they're uh, the blossom the blossoming flower on this bud at least is just growing and expanding and they're just luscious they look supremely healthy okay does there, does there seem to be any other reaction either from the statue or from the surrounding area? Not that you can tell. Okay. Uh, when Aurora gets in the area and sees the flowers, she kind of will look at the group and be like, hey, those are pretty. Are those the ones that we're looking for? Um, and as the birds get close and seem to be bothered by it, she'll kind of cock her head and be like, the birds don't seem to like this The birds are fine. <laughs> How close are you getting to it, Aurora? Uh, not that close. <laughs> a ways okay. away from where they're doing their weird reaction. Right. Hey, Wisdom Cal. saving throw range plus one. Yeah. Do you realize <laughs> that this is really a canary in the mine shaft scenario right now? <laughs> oh. Hey, the oh. canaries went in there on their own. Uh huh. They're well trained. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Ino that is, that is kind of funny. Inoki will make its way to where the birds are. I assume I'm going like with yeah. the intent of getting closer. So I'll okay. take take that with some saving throw. I would have to make it too because I'm hanging on to him. Okay. Okay. So that's a twenty-one for me. Okay, you're good. And a five for me. Okay. <laughs> so. I eject sparks. 
No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Emergency ejection seat. <laughs> I, I have no, I have no idea that he's. I have no idea that he's affected yet. So. Okay. Yeah. So so basically, what happens is this musk assails you both, but um, Anoki, you're used to the pungent smell of many different kinds of mushrooms and dec- decaying creatures, and mm-hmm. you just kind of brush it I off. I relish in it. Yeah. You. It's like. It's like a co- fine coffee to you, or something. Yeah, yeah, it's to, to yeah, it's like coffee and a bouquet of roses and all of the, like all the pungency that is just the the nastiest things in nature, and I love it. Yes, it's amazing, and you think that Sparks agrees because he kind of slides off your back and um starts to. Uh, kind of like lift his nose up and it's kind of twitches as as you inhale the full scent of okay. this the bouquet of this musk and strikes you um all you want to do is smell more of this 20 necrotic damage I mean. yeah <laughs> so you're going to um continue walking towards these I'm like, flowers. Oh wow, that is stinky, but the kind of stinky that you want to smell more. <laughs> As I kind Dude, of you guys gotta come smell this shit. <laughs> exactly. And as you approach these and you um reach out to kind of like lift this flower gently towards your face, you are completely distracted as um, a tendril of vine reaches out and slowly wraps a coil around you and starts Do to I see cons- this? Uh, you do see this, but before you can do anything, um, you, Sparks, are going to take 13 psychic damage. Ooh. That's, that's a whole bunch at level 2. It is. How does that look to like? How does that look on my character when I take that damage? You tell me. So, what would psychic damage look on Sparks? Probably just like another day. (laughs) (laughs) It's Tuesday. (laughs) Is it Monday or Tuesday type of psychic damage? No. No, um, I'm probably just gonna be like, I kind of like shake and like make a bubbly noise as I kind of like loosen up a bit. Yeah, I, w- I was going to say, I wonder if, like, when Sparks takes psychic damage, he actually, like, sobers up for a second. <laughs> like, he's you know, normal for a minute. Yeah, so, so, so this, this, so you do have this reaction, and it's, it's, your reaction appears positive, and you actually kind of, like, straighten up a little bit, but at the same time, you kind of, like, uh, turn to look towards your friends, and they can see just, like, a trail of blood coming out of your nose. And then I just kind of like burp slightly. Like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah. So, um, with that, that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> so next week. Now I'm just going to ne- have that next in two in my weeks. Mind until two for two weeks. <laughs> um, Everybody, Sparks is dead. Yeah. So <laughs> you guys actually, how many hit points oh do you goodness. think you guys? Are think you guys going to let me finish my sentence? <laughs> you guys are just so excited so uh, Sorry, in two Mom. weeks we will be coming back for the next episode that is going to be on Tuesday February 26th um, and we will find out what happens to Sparks and the rest of the gang at this statue um, thank you guys for tuning in we are going to take a quick break and then we'll return to chat a little bit so I uh, hope you guys stick around and we'll see you in a bit
According yeah. to most cannibals, people taste like weird chicken or pork. <laughs> and with that, we're back from our break. <laughs> So before stream, we kick back the audio on the stream. I'm going to say this. Oh, wait, it's back. It is. Ah. His... Corrupt your brain and eat it from the inside. You guys are only hearing part of this conversation, but. even has but... a fun name. Long Pig. Guys, oh. we're back hey, live. Hey, StarCraft. I have been trying to let you know this for like two minutes. <laughs> what now? But no how, one's how listening to me. That oh, hey, look at you, ground. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, my word. So, what a game, guys. Oh, boy, howdy. You guys are like, oh, man, he got really weird. I'm sorry. I think it's really funny that chat thinks I'm Canadian. It is pretty yeah. funny. <laughs> You've been channeling the letter Kenny too much. I know. Yeah, I too much. I literally watch it every day. I thought that was just a joke about the fact that you apologized for something, but I thought I thought so at first too, but then I just realized it's because I've been like quoting Letter Kenny. <laughs> uh huh. Also, you did say at one point before we started playing at all that um. Uh, Serpides was going to have a real heavy Midwestern accent. Oh, and... man, you're totally right. I forgot about that. You guys, I've had such... I need to... It's I'm not gonna, too I'm gonna, late I'm to record start that it. back up. Humana, Next... humana, humana. <laughs> Nobody let me forget. Okay. I'll try and remind you before we go live next next time. Chapter 3, yeah, in I which totally Serpides... You're right. I gets... need to, like, cargo so I can get the accent. Right. I'm still so, kind of working on my voice for whips, so. So, you know, I literally just realized that this entire time that we've been back live that my mic has been muted in Discord, so I've been just yelling like, why are you guys so ridiculous and why is nobody listening to me? But it's because you guys couldn't hear me. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Damn it. Oh. <laughs> because you, so we because had you no have... Idea. <laughs> Hi, oh, God. God. How long have we been live? <laughs> <laughs> what the I, What's the first wow. subject you heard us talk about? And please say it so, wasn't that. So cannibals, <laughs> Celtic naughty thing. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't turn it back on on that subject. But then it was the cannibalism and Canadians, and I've just been like <laughs> okay. over here commentating. Uh -huh. uh, I feel so bad <laughs> about myself <laughs> and right, life. Well. So I'm ready to. To hide after this but what a game uh -huh. guys died. what a game <laughs> welcome to what they talk about when i'm apparently not here and they're oh, no. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, my mom man. leaves the room yeah no i was i was like getting so frustrated i was like i'm talking but nobody is listening so, so let me ask you this question yes tirathon what did you do what did you do wrong that you're almost dead now? <laughs> and what and what did you learn? Hey guys, so... just because we're getting married doesn't mean I pick favorites. So he knows. <laughs> no, I can see that. <laughs> oh, so, so uh, just because your backpack ride goes in the general direction doesn't mean you should too. <laughs> yes, learning lessons. <laughs> Your this is not so. Last week was fawn sequences. What's this week's theme? Hey, is it? It's always me, isn't it? I'm always the one that's <laughs> doing the bad thing around here so far. Right. I, I have this week's th theme. There's no such thing as a free ride. Uh, oh my god! Uh, no no freeloaders here. Sequences. Frond sequences. Oh jeez. <laughs> But you want to, you want to know what's going to happen here is like Enoki's going to feel responsible that he just mm -hmm. that it just is like oh crap that's on that's me. fine. Wh Whip will be very happy if uh, Enoki becomes Sparks's babysitter instead of him. <laughs> None of us are going to be surprised or blaming right. anybody if Sparks suddenly. Right. Wait wait wait. He'll be able. Wait what? Does this mean toilet? that he got a, a bad vine? Uh, 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 <laughs> I guess that's an inspiration. <laughs> oh, 
like, or off the table, but you them. can you can have uh-huh. that. <laughs> Shame inspiration. Yes, you guys you should... also need to let me know how many inspirations I've given you each. Uh, Aren't you only? They do stack. Are, are we actually being allowed to keep more than one at a time? Oh yeah. On like normal inspiration, okay. You can, normal, have... you can only have one, but right. with me, you can have more. I see. You're not a you... mom. You're the fun mom. I'm the fun mom, except for <laughs> for Sparks. <laughs> I think you're the fun mom. I think you're the really fun mom. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, and we're back. Yes. <laughs> so cannibalism. So <laughs> more no, more no, no. no. Like I'm here, experiment. and you can hear me now. We're cha- We're not. We're not doing that. So, uh, what was your favorite part of the game tonight, guys? Everything. Uh, Thirteen I second mean... damage. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd have to say the fact that I showed up on screen. People joined in. That was just perfect. I wasn't sure how you guys were gonna go react to a dancing bard. Oh yeah, yeah that was like that was a great like the the happy go lucky characters just kind of joining in the dance. It was so sweet. That was really fun and peaceful for a brief moment of time. Mm-hmm. Then you're Please. all gonna die. <laughs> no, then you, you know are... so. I sh- yeah. <laughs> I should let you guys know. I mean, I did tell you this going into the campaign, but um, on that like D and D bucket list, that uh, out of these twenty things, what level are you? How many of them have you done? I am only level nineteen because I haven't had a TPK. So <laughs> yeah, me neither. Oh, yeah. So you have a perfect score, and I... you don't want to fix it. You don't want to ruin that. I'm sipping my tea saying. right now. You can't see it, but that's what I'm doing. Uh, that's her most malicious. Okay, voice. it's all right. I have a I have a backup character ready already. His <laughs> name is Whippoorwill, and he's a Kenku Druid. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you guys no. are just <laughs> no Caldernon. That's when we bring back Quincy and Tayamo. There we go. Tayamo. Yeah, yeah. Don't yet. Yeah, so. This is my my warning to you. Don't kill Whippoorwill because I'll play Tayamo and that will be a punishment for you. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Let's see if that works out for you. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Punishing well, the GM is a great plan, guys. That's sarcasm. Real quick. Yeah, I think my favorite part was the introduction of Deidre and the, the dancing and everything too and the and just all the different personalities response to that was pretty fun. Yeah. yeah, I loved how that's really when like Seripides dad mode came out. Like it was coming out with the the campfire stuff, but really when it was just like, oh here we go, <laughs> that... I'm back on this bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite part was the fact that Seripides finally is smiled because somebody <laughs> because they were talking about death and she thought it was amusing. Oh. <laughs> Yes. No, this this will not be the last time we talk about death like that, especially with Bell oh. Toll and I. Oh, certainly not. I think Seripides was just, like, so caught off guard with the fact that, like, you know, everybody else in the group is, like, pretty positive for the most part and, like, just really peppy, she feels like. It was just refreshing to, like, see a couple of other people that are a little bit more in, like, in her realm of the world, aka okay with death. Yeah, there's definitely a team peppy and like a team depressy in this <laughs> game. There's nothing depressing about death. It's part the, of yin, the yin and the yang of the party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh oh, what was this comment? Uh, Static Brown says the introduction of the two characters and the interactions and meeting them were my favorite parts of the session. Yeah, okay. that that whole scene was really fun, and we mm. got to do some actual combat that wasn't just hunting animals. That was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Innocent animals for no reason. <laughs> I feel like I was an animal. No, they're delicious. There was an ostensible down, down reason, the trail. but it was um, Sparks' idea, and we didn't quite realize. I, th- I think, not to like retcon too hard, but I think Whip, Whip kind of didn't realize how off Sparks was 
and now is a little bit more aware in part because of that. Hmm. Interesting. Especially Perhaps... with the um the discarding of the meat. <laughs> yeah, and then not remembering. Aurora's confused and concerned now right. too. Yeah, like in the previous session, Whip was just like, "Yeah, let's go hunt for some meat, and then we'll have that, and that'll be good." And then a halfling killed an entire deer, <laughs> and then threw it out the next morning. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so me, oops. This is garbage. So, <laughs> Get rid so, of it. Irish, I rolled a I rolled a three on my long rest chart for my character at the beginning of the log rest. Oh yeah, you didn't tell me about that this time. Which is why I didn't remember anything of the night before. And through the All right. That, that is what we agreed on. It was related to that. What, what is this long rest table you have? So because my character is mentally impaired, at the beginning of, or at the end of every long rest, I roll a d6 to determine what mental impairment statuses I get with that. And every time I take a short rest, I add another little mini one with a different table. So my actual player is not only like role played as crazy, but actually has like actual impairments crazy mechanics. besides just role play. Wow. <laughs> crazy mechanics, yeah. So it's actually kind of rough to play this character because you are a glutton <laughs> for punishment. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> this is this is not a easy character to play for like. Yeah, it's rough. Oh my yeah. gosh, but... what did you do wrong? <laughs> so so the thing is, though, like this isn't just like, a, oh, we just found a bunch of like random things and put them on a crazy chart, but um, he has a specific... A specific That's exactly what you did! <laughs> ...mental illness with like specific symptoms and stuff. And so okay. we're actually basing it off of something that um, is more realistic, even though it's in kind of like a like a goofy crazy setting but it's it's using actual like real world things that people have to deal with so that's why i thought it was a really interesting character concept that's that is cool yeah. that is cool yeah and so one of the interesting things that i figured out for playing the character is that every time i take a short rest i gain another tiny little negative status effect so sometimes the nine only worth taking us short rest but when i take long rest it clears all the status effects from short and long i was just gonna say how long do they accumulate yeah yeah, yeah. but if i roll if I, if I roll a six on either the long or short rest dice then i don't get any additional effect and some of them are kind of minor um and the first day that i was with all of you guys for the first session i rolled a six on the long rest so i didn't have any status effects the first day oh nice uh, yeah, it was just a little woozy that day, but yeah, it'll be really interesting to also see like how well you can remember all this stuff because that that can get really complicated. <laughs> yeah, I've been keeping a list every single time we play of exactly what I rolled and how long the like which which duration I'm on. So I have it right in front of me all the statuses I'm under. <laughs> That's good. It's a good way to do it. I haven't actually rolled anything super bad yet. Everything's been kind of mediocre or good for rolls, but when I roll something super bad, it could be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see how it goes. And we'll workshop stuff along the way. But yeah. Um, any other thoughts? What are you looking forward to next session in two weeks? I'd like to oh. actually hit something. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see you killing everything. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of the problem with having so many characters. It's like finding the balance between uh, challenge rating for encounters to make sure everybody can get their swings in, but uh -huh. being consistent about how difficult the monsters are. So nice. there will there will definitely be opportunity next session for everyone to get more time to shine. I think I was a little bit limited by the time crunch of having you guys come in later in the session. Mm -hmm. But now everybody's been introduced, so we can just jump in with whoever is able to make it. So now you can kill us with giant monsters. Yeah, it's fine. No, not me. You guys are emotionally attached a little bit now, so... <laughs> so now it will hurt. <laughs> and that'll make it worth it for you. 
No, that was a joke. That was a joke. I'm here <laughs> to have fun as well, not just torture people. Now I want an actual Sparks backpack. Yeah. Oh, oh man. I mean, Tirthon is pretty tall. It would be hard to give him a piggyback ride around places just Challenge on a, a regular basis, but you could definitely accomplish it. <laughs> yeah, that would be, if you two cosplayed your characters, it would be a little bit... Oh my gosh. Unusual. I scale. don't know if I can cosplay something that's supposed to be less than three feet tall. <laughs> I would need stilts. Your knees. Because Inoki is six foot seven. Mm-hmm. Craig would just I would need, need... high heels. I could probably, I could cosplay Anoki and Sparks because I'm six foot four, and then I that could would be... use like a little stuffed animal type thing for Sparks and put a big hat on it. Actually, if you just had the hat and had that add the extra three inches, you'd be perfect. Yeah, and I'm super lanky and long, so I already look like some mushroom stock. It's perfect. We could paint your skin like birch bark. <laughs> Add just, the use a, eye. just use a, a paint roller <laughs> with splotches. That's we could do like a, a giant long tube type dress and LED backlight some eyes and make it so it's mm-hmm. just a hat oh, yeah. and shoes sticking out of the stock. I could see oh, myself gosh. falling over so many times. <laughs> Oh, um, one thing I I noted on my notes about things to talk about during this portion of the night was that Alora has a joke that she really oh. wants to tell you guys. Oh my god, <laughs> it's it would be I'll tell I'll tell one of them because the other one is not as good if you can't see it. Yeah. So I'll tell one joke. Okay. So there's this guy looking for a job in the newspaper and he's flipping through the pages um and he doesn't have any arms so he's like having to flip it with his face and he sees this ad for a bell ringer at a church and he's like well i can do that and so he gets up and he walks over to the church and slams his head on the door to knock on it and a priest answers and is like yes my son and the guy's like, Father, I'm here to ring the bell. And the guy's like, but you don't have any arms. And the guy that's applying for the, oh my god, my face. <laughs> the guy that is asking for the job is like, yeah, you think I didn't think about that? Like, just, you know, show me where the bell is, I'll ring it. So the priest leads him up 13 flights of stairs. And it's about 2 o'clock, so the bell needs to be rung. And the priest looks at him and he's like, all right, ring the bell. And so the guy walks back as far as he can, runs face first into the bell, slams his face in it, and it goes, bong. He does it again, and the priest is just flabbergasted by what's happening. Like, he can't believe that this guy just smashed his face on this giant-ass metal ball. And, but at the same time, he did it, so he gets the job. And every day, at every hour, he has to go up 13 flights of stairs, run backwards, and slam his face into this bell. So after like two months, this guy's face looks like a pancake. And one day, it's about three in the afternoon, so he's already gone up like a whole bunch of times. And he's getting ready to run, except this time he trips. And he falls down 13 flights of stairs splat all over the sidewalk like a pancake and a bunch of people gather around and this guy like tries to scoop up what's left of the guy in his arms and this fat lady is standing over them screaming who is it who is it who fell power and the guy holding him goes i don't know but his face rings a bell i know <laughs> <laughs> You've been hanging out with Caldronon for too long. I didn't groan good. just so you wouldn't get in again. <laughs> I'm not that so, kind of bell. Let let this fuel you, Alora. I I took my glasses off and pinched the ridge of my nose with my yes. fingers. 
That's what I like to hear. I can picture that. <laughs> so that was a story time with Canadian Alora. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for tuning into the stream. Um, thank you I, for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. This is fun. And I cannot wait to reconvene in two weeks and continue where we left off. Yeah. yeah. I have to, I'll actually keep track of what week it is this time. Yeah, yeah, and we'll be posting more. And uh, if you want to um, keep up with when we are putting out announcements for this show, you can follow us on the Twitters. And um, we will be, yeah, just, just to recap, because I said it before the break, but um, next show will be February 26th, same time, 4.30 p.m. PST, here on Twitch. And we're going to have fun, and we'll be starting off in the middle of a very dramatic scene. So I'm stoked. But uh, yeah, everybody have a good two weeks. Stay warm, and um, may the wind be ever at your back. Yay! Yay! Yay.